didn't warn him, Bobby. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the DL Gaming <laughs> Podcast. I'm Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> that's Ray, <laughs> if you remember it enough. And uh and this is the podcast where we don't take retakes ever. No matter how bad not on the, the intro. intro. No. Oh my god, the song was playing, huh? <laughs> yeah, and we don't hear it because Yeah, damn it, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, you know <laughs> while I'm talking. I lost my Elgato. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, how let, let's get an update first from Emilio. Um, how's the coronavirus going? Ray. Oh, for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm fine. I feel great. I'm back to a hundred percent. I would say, although I did say that before and then I fucking did minimal, like wash the dishes and then I was out for like four hours. <laughs> so, uh, but today, great. Yesterday. Great. So I think it's finally out of my system. Um, yeah, it was a, really weird sickness but uh it's gone now so you going back to work soon or you still have another week of it to uh wait out yeah another week Uh, you have to have like doctor's permission or something to go back or like yeah yeah my doctor yeah my doctor said he didn't want to see me until two weeks after no symptoms which was technically like wednesday so do you still get paid yeah i'm getting paid i have two and a half weeks of uh pay yeah nice yeah okay a lot of free yeah, time. For, uh, you would think, dude. You would think, but now I just, I just have more chores somehow. Somehow more chores of beard. But yeah, yeah. more. T- yeah, I do have more time. I actually played a lot of video games today or this week. Ray, nice. tell me yeah. about your life. I don't know much about it. So I know that you, you, you got that apartment like right as the virus hit. So you had no furniture. You couldn't buy furniture for a while, right? We were well. Ashley, we we one of the stores we found was like Ashley Furniture, and it's like oh, we checked it out. We so we got we ended up getting a couch and like a dining thing, um, and then we the fridge right there that yeah, the was one. like and Alana's there. What's up? <laughs> but um, you're on the podcast, baby, like live. Sorry, uh, <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> and um, that one was freaking us out because. Um, I guess Samsung was delivering everything like to everyone. And, and I mean, they were like canceling a bunch of like orders. So they said we're, we were going to get a fridge like in a month. Dude. So we're like, how oh. the, f-? and we had a mini fridge that her dad let us bar, like let us borrow. So that's what we had in the kitchen, a little fucking, I don't know, like three by three by three fucking. Yeah. Fridge. Yeah. Fucking Standard little mini. Min- yeah, dude. And it would be, we, we like, we had, a, we had like just eggs, cheese, a thing of yeah. milk and that was it and then we and tried no to have ice some, no ice yeah it was horrible dude we, so we ended up calling samsung and then uh within like 10 days we ended up getting delivered finally but they fucked up the floor and cracked some tile and shit it was pretty cool but um but no dude it sucked because we ended up getting here and people asked me like how's la and i'm like i don't know check out my apartment you know that's pretty much it that's all i have it's just this these fucking four walls dude and we were exaggerating at first where we didn't want to go out, do anything, but we still don't go out or do anything. Um, we just look <laughs> at, but I mean, like now, because we were like, we would order Amazon Prime, like the fresh or like uh, mm-hmm. or Prime now for all our groceries and everything that came in. We had to wipe everything fucking down, make sure everything was like COVID proof and <laughs> I don't know, dude, COVID free and uh, gloves. Freaking, we, we went all out, dude, because like we wanted to be able to go back to San Diego and visit our families, and you know, and we don't want to get our parents sick because that was like the main concern, right? Like, you know, careful with old people. And, um, but then we ended up just like after like two months, like we finally, like we started going out a little bit, like going to Vons and like Walmart and, you know, telling Gia, don't touch shit, you know, or we'll leave you here. Um, and, <laughs> And it was just, it was, it was chill. Like it, it, now we're like, all right. Like, cause like, I, I guess I'll still walk out to the street, you know, and like go walk around. Cause like I live in Sherman Oaks and there's like a, the LA river, which is just like a fucking drainage concrete thing. Slab, <laughs> yeah, concrete yeah. slab. Yeah, dude. So, you know, but like it has like a bike route and stuff. So I go and walk and like, I just go chill. Um, I'll go have a cigarette because they started to, sm- you know, if COVID tells you don't smoke, it's bad for smokers. And I ended up starting smoking again, like bad more because <laughs> I'm, because I'm nervous. I'm bored. Like, what do I do? I can go outside and have a cigarette. Cool. And like, I would go do that. Um, but that's pretty much been it, dude. And reeking. I mean, 
using the I'm an unemployment right now because no one wants to hire me for shit. <laughs> so because of COVID and I don't know, like I'm job searching again. Like I just like starting like this week. I'm just like, all right, cool. Applications out there. See what's up. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. Dude. But like I, most of the time I've just been gaming too. Here's That's the man. irony, dude. I actually got it, and it fucked up your life worse. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Cool. Let's but, talk uh, about some video games. Yeah, dude. Go for it. All right. Who wants to start? Uh, Don't everyone jump at once. Jeez. I've only got one game, so I'm saving it. Someone else go. I, yeah. Okay. Uh, dude. Okay. So I... Because... You know, I was playing a bunch of Warzone and I was playing a bunch of, and I was still randomly playing Apex or CSGO and Valorant, you know, a lot of Valorant, but I got bored. Wait, is it true that it's 200 gigs now? Yeah. Warzone? It's like, yeah, it's around 200 gigs. Whew. It's ridiculous, dude. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like, you don't, yeah. you don't feel it, I guess. I don't know. When, when, okay, so when these 50 gig updates come through or these 90 gig updates, do you do you see the update and you're like, oh, that totally makes sense that it's 50 gigs? Or no, like, no, uh, uh-uh. it does not fucking make sense to me because it looks like just like hot like hot fixes are like you know they nerf some weapons or add some weapons and that's pretty much it. Like I don't see where these 50 gigabytes are fucking coming from. And some people like sometimes they'll say that you know they'll they'll, they'll data mine and they'll be like you know inside the stadium they're finally building stuff in there you know or little things like that but i i don't feel it dude like i don't know why they're so huge and i feel like as the whole covid thing happened since a lot of them are working from home i feel like since they, they don't have access to maybe like a lot of stuff to compress their files or something they're just like fuck it let's release it you know and it maybe yeah. not a lot enough work you know behind it that's why these files kept on getting bigger but but yeah dude um my game was messed up i couldn't play any uh warzone for a while because it was giving me an error and it just it'd go over and over and over again. I was like, I, I can play a game for like 10 minutes and then like it would crash. And I, I Googled everywhere. I contacted like um, fucking Blizzard. They couldn't help me. And then finally, I had to like uninstall. I had to actually reinstall Windows in order for it to work. It was super, it was a super fucked up error. And then when I had to reinstall, it was like 208 gigs. And I was like, what the fuck? It took me like all night, like, I don't know, like four hours. Cause it doesn't even let you have like full speed. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, I'm downloading at like 45 or 50 megabytes, you know, a second. I'm downloading at like eight megabytes a second. So it took, it took like overnight, dude. It was like ridiculous. Wow. So regardless of your internet connection, it still downloads at that speed. Yeah. Even, yeah, it's just like, I guess the Blizzard server sucks, dude. Um, And like, or some of the updates sometimes there'll be you know if, if the updates just came out of course you're downloading at four or five megabytes but then if you wait for the next day to download the update then you'll be like at 20 megabytes i guess it just depends how crowded their servers are damn but um but i got over like i got bored i got bored of valorant i got bored of warzone it was just valorant was fun but a lot of people didn't want to play because they just they didn't like the cartooniness to it which you know i just think about they prefer csgo but then i look at csgo and i'm like it's not like it looks fucking real you know what i mean it's just it's still a little yeah. cartoony and uh and then people don't like some like some of my friends don't like the the abilities and i'm just like dude the abilities are fucking awesome i think it adds so much more like instead of having just a basic ass like smoke grenade you know your 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 dude throws a cloud of smoke or like a molotov the guy throws fire at people it's i think that's freaking awesome it's the same thing but I started getting a little bored of it. Um, and Is that I'll, game officially out yet? Yeah, it's out there. You can totally play it. It's free. And it's free to play? Free to play. Uh, uh, what, did they, what did they go with to make money? Loot boxes or what do they have? Um, no, no, they're not loot boxes. It's just skins, dude. But these are the most expensive fucking skins I've ever had, like I've ever seen. Because you can go on CSGO and buy a pistol skin um, with, uh, with like whatever Valve credit or whatever the fuck Steam credit. But like... Or you or, or or you buy them cash. No way, you get them in the loot box, or you or you pay cash for them, like in the Steam market. But you can buy a skin for like ten cents, twenty cents. You know, like a shitty skin. But you can. But if you want your shit skinned, like you just do that or buy keys to open up brand new loot uh, loot boxes. But fucking Valorant, if you want all the guns, it's like four hundred dollars or something. Like all the skins for each gun, and like each. I mean, each skin's like tw- like thirty to forty dollars a skin. Jeez, is there any yeah. alternate way to get it? No, dude. 
Like, so it's just, so, that's how they so, make their money. Yeah, that's how they're making their money. Yeah, and, and these and, are just skins for guns, not your character. No, not for your character. No, and then you don't have all the characters. Like you start off with five, I believe, five or five or six, and you can buy you, them or earn them as you level up. As, as, oh, as okay. you level up, you earn them. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll be like, oh, you know, you can unlock a new champion, and uh, we're well, not a champion. They're called, I forgot what they're called there. I I call them a champion because I've been playing League, but um. I guess League does the same thing with their skins. They'll have like super epic skins, and those cost like thirty dollars, and people pay for them. So I'm guessing they use the same business model for Valorant, and they're like, "We got skins for guns." And dude, you're playing with people, and they have those skins, man. Like you see people yeah. with like, "Oh, that's twenty five dollars skin." Like that guy did not give a fuck and just gave him twenty five dollars for a skin. I like, I get it. You know, you're. I I get the part where you want to support, you know, the developer for giving you like a fun game. But at the same time, it's like, it's just a fucking skin, dude. I just, I yeah. don't care. I don't care. I don't get I, it. I don't get it that it's a skin for a gun. Like, if it's complete, like, model rework on your character, I get that a lot more. Like, in League of Legends or in, like, Smite, your entire character would be different. And even your, your abilities would look different because of the new skin. Uh, yeah. It would be the same abilities, but it would look different to suit that thing. So I, I could see where the money w or the time went in, but just reskinning a gun, I don't know. Yeah, I don't see the value. Well, that's what Counter Strike yeah. did. Counter Strike just yeah. had skins for guns and knives. Yeah, yeah but, but Counter Strike already had a gigantic player base going in. Mm -hmm. That wasn't their business model day one. It turned into their business model after they became free to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they yeah, also no, had an like, open market too. Yeah, but like, I guess yeah, because now CS:GO is free, right? And if but if you but if you pay in CS:GO, you get you get to play Prime matches, and Prime is the less hacker uh, version of it because in order to be a Prime, you have to give your uh, your cell phone number, and if and and if you get banned, your cell phone number gets banned. So the only way to play Counter Strike again is if you uh, get a new Steam account and you have a completely different cell phone number. If not, you know, if not, you you you, you can't play Prime anymore. So now that's with pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think they started doing that with um is it called either Call of Duty or Valorant. One of those two that they added the phone number thing too, like verification. I think it's Call of Duty. That's their way that they're trying to crack down on hackers. Because dude, Call of Duty got annoying, man. There's so many fucking hackers, dude. But like exaggerate amount. And you're watching them and it's you know, when you play hackers on CSGO. You'll you'll be like ah, that shot was kind of weird, you know. He had a flick. Uh, that flick was too perfect, you know, or whatever. And you and you're watching them, and and you're like, no, nah, he's not hacking. And then, you know, you really have to catch him, like, like uh, you have to like watch the analyze replay. shit, yeah, or or, or like year. watch the replay after the match is over, where you could turn off walls or like see people, like uh, like the outlines, and you see the guy aiming at him already, you know, behind the walls, and then you can be yeah, like, yeah. oh, this guy really was cheating. But you have to really analyze it, year. you know. Um, and Warzone, they gave zero fucks, dude. It was just, it's just the guy would just be like, you're the guy 600 yards away, and they'll just be like headshot people, like, like to fucking, you'll, they'll get Rambo fucking big ass <laughs> what, guns and just like start demolishing people. And zero fucks, dude. They don't care. It's just super funny. Like, like you get mad at this, like the second half, like, oh, it's bitch fucking hat. And then you watch like the replay and you're like, oh, he's a fucking hacker. You're mad at him. And then all of a sudden you watch, you're like, let me watch him for a little bit. And you're laughing your ass off the whole time. It's super fucking entertaining watching a hacker. And then I, I've, I've watched them to where, um, like the guy's like going all the way to like to be like to win, and then he goes against like another hacker. And then you see like, like it's hilarious because he'll be hiding behind a tree. Yeah, dude, <laughs> they'll be hiding behind like trees and shit, and you'll see him like fire, like he'll be firing through the tree, try to hit him, and then you can't see the other guy either, and he's hitting him too, and you're like, oh, dude, there's two hackers going against each other. It's fucking hilarious. It sucks that a whole a game, an entire game, is ruined because of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, but you know they 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 implemented the the phone thing now, I guess. So and there's been less hackers. They're cracking down on them like every like week or two weeks. They you know take out 50k hackers. But it's a free to play game, you know. I just start a new account, and it's not a big deal. Mm. Yeah, you know? that's the only thing. But um, but yeah, dude, uh, I started playing started playing League of Legends. That's the main one. That's fun. I I was well, never... you have a ton of time, dude. That's a good I, thing. I to know. Get into. It's such a hard game, though, dude. It's it's the hardest game I've ever. 
Well, what mode you know, are you and, playing in League of Legends? Just straight up draft. Oh, okay. Draft and uh, and then I'm I'm already level 36 or 37, so I can start doing rank now. But in rank, dude, I get owned, like destroyed, like it hurts. Like I normally don't get my ass kicked that hard in video games. You know, I'm normally pretty good at anything I pick up. But MOBAs, dude, I get my ass kicked. And dude, it's I, like, a giant I'm, mountain to climb, man. Oh, dude, I'm le- like I'm getting better. You know, like I have a buddy, um, and he's been playing leagues for seven years now and he's he's really good and he's like he's the one that's like he's been teaching me he's been teaching me and uh and daniel and um and we were like i guess we've we've improved a lot you know like i play mid i play annie that's like my my main and then i'll or i'll play jungle with um with echo or uh graves or what's the other one I i just started playing uh with master yi and fiddlesticks uh I, I started liking jungle but jungle's like i think the hardest position to play i don't know um did you ever play league any of you guys mm-hmm. yeah i played a good amount of league i mean not a whole lot but i would dip into it every now and then and the meta will change too so it's like if you yeah. learn, if, if you play jungle it's like you learn your route and then you know a week later that could change and you need mm-hmm. to learn how to do something so it's always constantly staying up to date with what the meta is and it changes as you get better too and you play against better players so it's a never-ending cycle man (laughs) yeah dude i like i didn't know that part about this game because i was like dude i'm doing so great like i'm i'm using like master yi and jungle and it's super easy and like in my farming super easy and then i play a rank game with people that are gold or higher and like they just destroy master yi and i'm like but i kicked the fuck out of everyone else like that's like lower elo and no, they were just like, I, I just started getting owned. And then my buddy's like, oh, no, it's because Master Yi's more of a low-level ELO. But when you get higher, you have to use these kind of champions. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, mm-hmm. it's such a hard game. And being able to control the camera and focusing on wards and then focusing on the map and then, like, looking everywhere, dude. It's such, it's, it's, it's other level, man. I've never, uh, it's the funnest time I've had in gaming in a long time, learning a brand new type of game. But it's all but it's super hard and it's it gets very frustrating and like i you know i'll play first person shooters and my fingers feel fine but i played this shit dude and like i swear to god i got carpal tunnel like i, it's I can feel muscles man yeah dude it, I'm, I'm feeling the arthritis dude coming up i swear to god it's different physical muscles and it's different mental muscles uh, i could never like when the closest i ever got to playing this was playing smite and uh uh, and once they started, I needed to start putting wards down and think of more than one thing at one time that I was done. Like I never really got good at, at playing the macro. I could only, yeah. I could kill what's in front of me pretty good, but it, thinking about things outside of my lane, uh, yeah. I was terrible at. Yeah, dude. Like I, like, like I started doing little by little or like, like my friend will get mad and be like, why the fuck did you do that? And I'm like, cause there's a million things I have to do. And I messed up with one dude. Yeah. And that was, yeah. and that was it. <laughs> yeah. It's a job. But, uh, <laughs> it is dude. It is. I'm learning wards now. Wait, I, I, I actually place my wards now, like all the time, you know, like, you know, the pinks or the, or the free ones. And, um, and then, and, but then like every champion is so different. Like I, I use this champion called fiddlesticks, which is like the skinny, scary looking scarecrow. And he has like more wards than everyone else, and they kind of like move and stuff. So like he puts up fake scarecrows, and when, when people see him, they'll chase him. So like I learned to use wards because of playing fiddlesticks. So now when I play like Annie or I play like Master Yi, I place wards more wards now, and then um, playing other learning other champions have helped me get better with like. Because I was I was good with Annie, and then I started playing other champions, and then I came back to Annie, and I got even better, you know. With yeah, Annie. like no, for sure. Like the best way to learn against or fighting other people is learning those people, uh, playing them. I lost sound. Yeah, no, you, you guys I, hear me? I, yeah, I can hear, we you. can hear you. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, you have to play everybody just so you know. Yeah, what the weaknesses yeah, yeah. are. Yeah, that's and which is like the worst because, okay, like I've, if I look at the game time I have right now, it's like around four days that I have on league, um, so you know almost what oh, more than hundred. I, I have more than hundred hours in the game already, and um, and there's still 
people like you know like some guy will some champion will come up and be like who the fuck is this guy dude i don't know who he is i have no clue I've ne- there's 150 champion 120 champions from like that yeah in league so i'm like i've never seen him before and my buddy was like yeah no one uses that guy anymore that guy came out like six years ago and i'm like okay what, what should i you know look for you know because everyone's different and they'll be like i think he has a stunt and i'm like what the fuck dude and then he'll be not like not even they summer- will know yeah i do yeah <laughs> It's such a crazy game to. It's like it's such an old game because it's been out for what ten years now or more. Just to jump on and like try to learn the meta for like the meta for each week, you know, because every every patch always changes what character. And I guess Riot tends to fucking like they have their like their priority character that they always want to fix and make sure they they're used um, with like the you know like the championship like World or LCS or whatever like you know tournaments they have. And then, at, and then they have other characters, the other champions that just they forget about, and they're just there forever. You know, just like you know, if you guys want to play them, cool, but you know, we don't give a fuck about them. Have you spent any money on it? No, no, not yet. My buddy, my buddy got me a skin, and he's like, "It's here. Here's your early birthday present." And he bought me like a Master Yi with like a lightsaber. It's super cool, and it got like the lightsaber sounds. It's pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Have you thought about it? Oh yeah. I want my Annie. To, <laughs> I want my Annie to look badass. But then I go, it's just the skin. I don't. I don't want to pay fifteen dollars for a skin just just so she has a a fucking Tron suit and like and her bare tibbers is like a badass like armor and shit. You know. Here's a so, here's a life life rule for everybody: no buying skins when you're on unemployment. That's just yes. We're gonna exactly. start with that rule and then exactly. Else. Exactly, down. especially because like Alana's on my ass when I start buying shit, <laughs> so she'll know. She'll totally know. <laughs> so Ray, I could tell that you haven't been uh, outside of your apartment. You just talked for forty-five minutes straight. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Welcome back to the cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I miss uh, talking to people, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I miss seeing faces because you're on Discord talking to people like, yeah, cool, you know, because like I see I'm with Daniel or Ivan or whatever or Nabi, we're playing games and but you don't see anyone, dude. Like I don't like I see people on Instagram on their stories. That's it. <laughs> uh, so I played uh, I played Gears Tactics. I talked about it originally when it first came out. Um, it is I play it on the Xbox Game Pass, which is only five dollars a month. And I still say is the greatest it's uh, the best gaming. Dude. it's the best uh just this last week uh, after the steam sale uh chad was like hey i bought endless space 2 on on steam what do you think i was like i think you have xbox game pass and it's on there and he goes ah shit i'll go return it <laughs> get, like you're it, every week there's like five six seven more games on there so you just got to keep an eye on there and get and look for stuff but they anyway, just this added was- fallout 76 it's yep. like, and, and people just bought it on Steam because they just moved it to Steam. You know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Yep. What else is on there? Um, there's a couple other big ones. Uh, like that one baseball game that Bobby plays, the over uh, out of the park oh. or whatever, that Sim one that he oh, played. That's once. the Sim one. Yeah, like the spreadsheet yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that's one's on out there. there. Hmm. Yeah, the OOTP 21. It's a new one. Oh, the newest one. I saw an article about how they they were saying that Cyberpunk is definitely not going to be on the Game Pass. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, no way. That's, a, that's an can. important thing to mention, though, because a lot of people are pre-purchasing that game. That would really suck to pre-purchase it and find out, hey, you could get it for five bucks a month. Yeah, I, 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 I pre-ordered it on GOG because they're like the official ones for it, and they and they get all the profit. So I made sure I bought it from them because I mm-hmm. really want to support them. Yeah, we're uh, on by so CD Project Red. Mm-hmm. It's a sixty dollar game, otherwise, but uh, you know, five bucks. I played it initially for a few hours and gave my two hour review like I usually do. But now that I have time, I played this game more than I have played any game in like in a straight like session. In uh, fuck, since the baby was born, probably um, this week alone, I've probably put in twelve to fifteen hours, and that's a fucking lot for me. That's a lot. Uh, and it delivers, man. This is, I don't know if it's my favorite tech. Uh, I, I got to play uh, Xbox again. I, I, I mean, Xbox, XCOM again. I bought the um, War of the Chosen DLC. So after I finish this game, I'm probably going to go jump into that 
or shadow tactics and then i could really tell you guys which one i feel is the best but um this even though it's turn based it feels action packed and that's mm-hmm. saying something like they're pushing the action constantly whether you go on levels that there's bombs dropping on you constantly from behind so you have to move your front line forward no matter what like uh the mexican would say a huevo you gotta <laughs> you're gonna die you're gonna die if you don't move forward um so that just pushes you and makes you fight in a way that might make you uncomfortable but that's the game uh and that's there's a lot of modes that are like that uh there's no set paths there's nothing you can predict they can the game parachutes bad guys wherever the fuck they want so there's you can't plan for anything it's just chaos all the time but it's fun chaos and uh, you get crazy bonuses for doing like melee attack assaulting with your bayonet and, like stabbing them with the or like chainsaw kills like everybody gets a hard on in your crew if you get a chainsaw kill they're like oh yeah fuck yeah dude and they all reload because you got a chainsaw kill and you're like oh shit that really fucking helps me out so you try to get chainsaw chainsaw i have another guy he heals everybody 20 percent if he gets if he chops a head off fuck nice. yeah i'm trying to chop heads <laughs> off so you're just like always assaulting always assaulting uh for, well now i've had it for two months for 10 bucks it's fucking incredible game man for sure uh the story i will keep saying like the cinematics are fantastic the graphics are really good um but and the, the story is good enough to to carry it like it's not you're just gonna blow your head away but it, it's i'm paying attention so that's pretty good for for me. I don't usually pay attention to stories. Um, the big one here, something I've never seen before, is true boss fights. Like true giant, huge monsters that you have to fight. And, uh, you know, you don't see these in these, um, in these turn-based strategies. Usually it'll be uh, a boss, but he'll only take up one square on, on the chessboard, right? This is like... It almost changes the entire game. I fought something called a, a Sarlac or Marlac, something like that. And it was, uh, you know, it looked like a Rancor from Star Wars. And mm-hmm. it had a weak point on its back. Uh, and so you had to surround it and continuously shoot it and make it turn around because it was pissed off and keep it keep it dancing. Because if it went in one direction too far, it would stomp and kill your guys. So I've never seen that before in a game like this, and uh, I'm a huge fan. It's a really, really good game, especially if you pay five bucks for it. Oh, and if you never found, signed up for game Xbox Game Pass, I don't know if it's still valid, but one dollar will get you first three months. Yeah, so I, I think I think they still have that. I think uh, my buddy got that the other day. If you can't afford a one dollar, dude. Uh, let me know. I will send you one dollar so that you can get <laughs> fucking Xbox Game Pass for three days, three months. You know, for uh, for Gears Tactics, like I I downloaded it and I was like, I'm ready to play this. I want to see who wants to play with me because I thought it was a multiplayer like tactics game, oh, and it's no. not. It's just single player. So I was just like, eh, maybe I'll try it later. I was talking to JP Diddy about that, about like why more multi uh, more tactics games aren't multiplayer because you're just taking turns you don't have to spend a ton it from a non-development side it seems like it's super fucking easy right like yeah yeah. oh you just have somebody else come in and make a couple two three four clicks it's not like you have to worry about net code or anything like that but whatever because it it would just be you hanging out with your friends if you could play xcom and each one of you was one of your friends Mm -hmm. be fucking dope yeah, it'd, it'd be, be fucking awesome. It'd be Divinity Original Sin is what it would be. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> yeah, just with more true. combat. <laughs> yeah, way more combat. That's my dog. Yeah. Yeah, so, a little golden oh, doodle. I haven't seen him. Oh, it's a Labradoodle, huh? Nah, uh, yeah, golden doodle. I guess same shit, right? I think it's just the hair. Astro. Yeah. Great he's name, like four too. months now. He's four months now. He's a fucking. He's hilarious, dude. He's smart as fuck, actually. It's like the first yeah. week you, he was already like he was already going outside to go poop and pee and everything like after the first week. Like um, and, I, 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 and and I, I got him at eight weeks. When I got Jocko, I heard how smart cattle dogs are. So I looked up smartest breeds. Poodle is number one. Yeah, mm-hmm. Poodle. Yeah, but aren't yeah, they? So if he's they're kind of dicks, though. I, I yeah. Heard. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this guy's Golden Retriever and Poodle. So he's got the smarts of a Poodle and he's got the friendliness of a Golden Retriever. 
Oh, that's a good so, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 It's always awesome. And dude, the hair, no hair falls out ever, ever. There's no hair. There's more body hair of me in the apartment that there isn't that fucking dog. That's like, disgusting, dude. <laughs> 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 uh, I also played Curse of the Dead Gods. I've played this before, but it's in early access. I was a huge fan of it when I first played it again, played it. And I've touched base on it again, and it is fucking way better than it was. And I'm super excited about where it's at. Um, it's a roguelike twin stick shooter, you know, fucking action RPG. Uh, it's my shit. But this game, when you take a look at it, you took a, take a look at the lighting effects and what it looks like. Um, man, it, it really feels like you're exploring these caves and... Uh, there's a there's a lot of mechanics at play here. So, one, the first mechanic is the light mechanic, right? So, you are stronger if you're in the light. So, you have a torch. You can fight with your torch, but it does very little damage. Uh, you can light the torches all around the braziers or brazars or whatever we decided they, they sounded, <laughs> or whatever the words were. <clears throat> you can light them as you're fighting, but also, like, big bad guys will, if they swing the right way, they're going to knock it over. So you're constantly trying to keep it lit, but if you don't, you just fight in the darkness and it's just something you have to do at a disadvantage. Uh, so that's the first mechanic. Second mechanic is that there's a uh, madness meter, much like uh, Darkest Dungeon. Probably you don't know that. Um, you, you level up your madness you don't want to. Every time you level it up, you get a new perk or quirk something negative it's very rarely positive uh, you'll get something like all your damage is now taken in gold before before health so you'll never have gold again because every time you get hit they take gold or or the map disappears so you don't know where you've been in the map so you can't plan anything out uh stuff like that and it seems to be pretty early in development like um as far as like all I'm basing that on is the numbers. Uh, it's like 0. 0.0 something. So it doesn't seem like it's close to uh, releasing. But if it released right now, I think it would do just fine. I was having a great time with it. And, I'm watching uh, the videos on this game, dude. It looks fucking sweet. Like, dude, it looks I, fucking I, sweet. I, I normally bag on your roguelikes. I'm like, it all fucking looks the same. Um, yeah. This one looks really cool, dude. <laughs> yeah. good uh, there's, a, there's a dodge roll. And there's a super unforgiving parry, like it is. When you're so when you're talking about like perfect timing, absolute perfect. I would say it's a fourth of a second the parry. So there's like no forgiveness there. Um, having a great time. Highly recommend it. I think uh, right now it's seventeen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much it was when on the Steam sale or if it was even on sale, but I can definitely recommend it uh, again how I usually do early access games that I'm really interested in, I'll probably circle back at this. Um, I'll probably delete it for now and circle back at full release or maybe in another three months when I remember about it. Hmm. Uh, it's yeah, not on so Xbox Game Pass, right? It is not. No. Okay. No, not so that make one. sure before everyone goes and buys it on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Project Warlock, um, there's a demo. So I play the demo. I'm not going to get too much into it because you can just play the demo for free. It's one of these games that, um, you know, it's a modern game that's trying to circle back to old games. It's uh, it's a Doom clone. Uh, you even, even when you walk, it's that really floaty, like you, your gun sways super drastically. Uh, the way that you interact things is like space bar. It's just, you know, going back to the old school stuff. It looks hell of a lot better. Um, I but, own this game. I didn't even know I did. Yeah. Uh, you own every game we ever talk about. Right? I've, I've <laughs> never played this shit. What the fuck? Is, how uh, do I own this? I don't know. You probably got it in a bundle <laughs> or something. Probably. Yeah, play I think it was on Humble only, Bundle. Might, might it's have only been, $4 yeah. and, It's $4.20 right now. Uh, after uh, the Steam sale. So... Um, 
Yeah, pick up the cool. demo. See if you if you like the demo, you'll know in two minutes if you like this game. It's not really for me. I'm not gonna continue playing it. I'm not even gonna play the four dollars and twenty cents. But it's got really good reviews. It's like ninety percent on Steam. They have a bunch of eights on their, from various websites. But it, it's just I don't know. I think we should be going forward, not backwards, personally. But it feels a niche for some people, you know. The game looks cool. I'm looking at the art. It right does now look good. And the video. It does look good. I might yeah. just download it. It's pretty cheap, and it's usually only twelve dollars. Yeah. And even twelve dollars, yeah. not even eleven ninety nine. Yeah, this one's been out for a while, and that's the lowest I've ever seen it. Four twenty. It's a great price for that game. Yeah, I'm not saying you're not gonna like it, guys. I'm saying it's not something that I would play, uh, mm -hmm. but it's worth taking a look at for the free demo for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, and no. the last thing I played this week. Oh no, Bobby, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I should have talked about Fuck this up. when you uh, <laughs> when you, you were talking about Gears Tactics because I also oh, right. played a turn-based tactics game. So the idea was that I was going to play last week. I said I was going to play XCOM Two because I bought that game right when it came out, played 15 minutes, and was like, "Yeah, I'm over it." And I always meant to go back to it. And I'll probably never play that game, man. Like last week was the week. But Nick, thank you very much, bought me Warhammer 40K Mechanicus. And I didn't even know this game existed. It's, it's a turn-based tactics Warhammer 40K game. Now, I'm not really super familiar with the Warhammer genre. I played one of the Space Marines games. I think that was it for a little bit. It was like real console-y, you know, just like an action hack and slash. Um... But I got to say, after playing this game, like I am very interested just in the Warhammer universe. This game, the, the style and presentation of this game is phenomenal. The soundtrack is incredible. This is, I, I don't know, I, I've kind of sat on it for a little while before I'm making this statement, but I feel like this is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard. Like it contributes so much Jesus. to the game and it sounds, it, it sounds really good. It doesn't like overshadow the game. It, it complements it and it still kind of knows its place in the background, but it's still... It, it still is awesome. And just the visual presentation as well. Like it's, it, you know, the Warhammer universe, I'm sure it's just like gothic futurism, techno futurism. So it's like, imagine medieval, like medieval and futurism and like some uh, cyberpunk in there a little bit. It's, um, it, I don't know. It's kind of like dubstep. Remember dubstep? from like yeah, 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I still like it. <laughs> like uh, Alien. It sounds like uh, Alien Transmission. That's kind of what the soundtrack sounds like. So the soundtrack is, it's very choral, very, um, a lot of organs, but it's also a little bit of dubstep. Like it's this weird mixture. And that sounds so like edgy and childish to me. But when I listen to it and also playing the game with the visuals, it just complements it so well. It, it's fantastic. Now the game itself is pretty good too. Like, I would have been fine with just another turn-based tact tactics game. And Warhammer does things a little bit differently enough to kind of make this uh, a little more enjoyable than what I was kind of expecting. Um, it's got this point system. You've got to actually earn these things called cognition points for you to do your actions. So it isn't like a lot of other uh, TBT games where you just get, uh, you get like three action points, right? And then you, yeah. you spend those, you can spend them on movement or you can spend them on like uh, helping, Attacks. healing, attacking, whatever. This, like you, you earn cognition points by doing certain things. And if you can, if you have enough, man, you can do quite a few things. You can do laps around the whole map, you know, with your, your cognition points. Um, so I like that. I, I really like that. Uh, they How have, do you gain them though? Um, you gain, well, with different abilities. So each character has a talent tree, you know, obviously, and you can talent them into like melee, into range, into, um, there's a tree where you can, uh, get more cognition points, but you know, if you do that, you sacrifice damage. So it's kind of like a balance. Um, you can also get like up to six different characters. This is another thing that I really like too. And I've kind of seen this before. What it does is, you know, you have your typical units, right? And you can get up to six of them. Now you can just like deck out three of them, have these guys like maxed out in three different skill trees and they're just beasts. 
or you can spread it out, have a larger team, but maybe everyone's not upgraded as much. But also you can send along these little minions who don't even matter, man. They can die. You can use them for whatever. Um, and there's different kinds of minions that you can get. Uh, they got a different name. Uh, I'm so unfamiliar with the Warhammer 40K like vernacular. Um, I think tech priests are what they call like the characters that you you build up. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't even want to try like listing everything. But uh, it, I saw this once before with um, Fort Triumph. Remember that turn-based tactics game that it was like kind of a bit of an RPG with this fantasy story? I talked about it a couple months ago. But yeah. that one didn't have that feature where you had these minion creatures, but it did have a... Um, it did have that in like early access, I guess, because when I read reviews on that game, it said like, oh, I really missed that feature. So I guess that was actually part of it. Um, but I, I did like that. So you could you could have more of your tech priests um, and less of your minions, or you could just have like one dude. And, and there's a talent tree that beefs up your minions. So you could have one dude and just a whole bunch of minions. Like there's so many different ways to go about it. And the way the game actually plays out is you go through and you run through all these levels, you get these missions, you go complete them. And when you're doing this, there's like a, there's like a stealth mechanic kind of called the awakening. Uh, when you, when you do things, it raises that awareness and you have this like global awareness meter. And when that reaches hundred percent, you get forced into the end boss. So the idea is to try to do as many of these missions as you can. And if you fail them, you get, if you fail, you get the awareness meter going up, but you don't get all the benefits of beating the mission. So that's, you know, kind of your punishment for failure there. So it's a, I, I like the whole systemic system that they had built around that. That was pretty good. Uh, the game has a lot of UI problems, a lot of UI and UX problems that like I was super surprised about. These are things where it's like, you just need one person to play the game to realize that doesn't work, man. Like, um, when, you, when you're doing your talent trees, every time you spend a talent point, it kicks you back out to like your main screen with all your guys. So if you got like five talent points to spend, you know, you have to go back into the guy, click, I want that one. Also, it doesn't let you select the talent points um, and then lock them in. So I, I can't be like, well, if I want to spend all my points on this guy, what's that going to look like? You know, how far down the talent tree can I get? Because it's not actually talent points you get. It's, um, it's like this resource you get. And each time you spend it to upgrade a character, then the costs increase. So it's really difficult to tell. Like, I've got this many credits. How much can I actually upgrade this guy? And to find out, you actually have to spend those. So... I don't know, man. Uh, it, it was little things like that. There's a few other examples, you know, like tool tips wouldn't pop up sometimes, like little little things like that. The layout of the weapons, like you collect these weapons and items and it lists them in order that you select them. But there's like three levels to every weapon. So you got like a, you know, an arc rifle, level one, two, three. You know, here's level one, there's level two, there's level three down there. It's like mixed in with all your other stuff. So it's super difficult when you're kidding out your guys to to figure out like, okay, what do I want on this guy? Like it's a whole lot of like having to go back and um, figure out where something was. It, it was, it, it added a lot of time to this game. I beat this game in around 20 hours. I want to say like two hours of that was just trying to figure out the, the UI. Fuck okay, UI. God yeah. damn, UIs are like, this. One, it's funny that it, twice I'm going to mention in this space, like, we gave Chad, or Chad and I gave in this space one a good review, almost basic entirely because of the UI. The UI is incredible, uh, and I, I will always I will die on this hill. If you don't know how to make a UI, just copy a good one. That nobody's gonna yeah, say right? anything. It's fucking. <laughs> it's buttons. It's buttons on the screens, guys. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. Fucking figure it out. I, it's it's nothing frustrates me more than a bad UI. Yeah, uh, it's, like it's I don't like I don't play many games where because like I'm mostly an FPS like shooter guy. So like you know, right there you really don't need a good UI. You know what I mean? It's yeah, kind of uh -huh. basic. Well, I mean, it depends it, on the game, dude. Borderlands had an awful system, at least for the first and possibly second. Still does. Oh, that still improved. does, dude. <laughs> I played. Kept... I played Borderlands three, and like I can't say like oh you know I. I stopped playing it because the UI sucked. Like it, that never even <laughs> crossed my mind. It never crossed yeah. my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but, it, it's like in Borderlands, you constantly have to think, oh, how do I do this in this game? I, mm -hmm. I know they do everything different. And that's not how it should be. It should be like 
your fingers should know how to do things automatically. It should just all be intuitive, but it's yeah. not because, mm-hmm. because somebody wanted to be different and edgy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or didn't uh, test it. I don't know. Because I like I was saying earlier, I feel like this is something where you play the game once and you realize right away there's a better way to do this. But I don't know, maybe yeah. that's just me. I um, guess like my first real UI I'm gonna test out is once Baldur's Gate 3 comes out, because that's gonna be my first strategy game I'm ever gonna play. Because I'm finally opening uh, like opening up to different games. And I'm excited for that. So hopefully the UI doesn't suck and then I can actually compare with you guys now. You know, we can share notes on UIs now for that. Yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, that's an uh, yeah. game. That's going to be pretty complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, see, like, for instance, uh, Divinity Original Sin, I can't think of the UI, and that's a good thing. I shouldn't ever have to think about your UI. Like, I, I was like, is it a good? Is it bad? I can't really think. Now that you're bringing it up, I'm like, well, if if I didn't notice it, it's a fantastic UI. Yeah. yeah. I'm, Does that I'm make sense? Yeah, if it's done right, you don't notice it. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. when I'm playing Minecraft, I don't even notice it, dude. Yeah. But it doesn't ruin this game. I mean, this game is pretty good. And it's on sale right now. Or it was. I It was on sale for around 10 bucks. Now it's back up to 30 bucks. It's still a really good good game. Like, I, I really enjoyed this. It did enough different in the turn-based tactical uh, genre to, to keep me interested. And it will probably be another year before I play XCOM 2 because of it. But <laughs> it, It's interesting that he... Uh... Like what Nick is trying to do is he's trying to fucking get us in the Warhammer 40k universe because it's such you know he's balls deep right now yeah, he's works, painting man. fucking he, yeah he's painting armies and stuff uh, yeah. and he he's like oh I have a great segment for you guys I'm gonna send you each a, a figurine and then you paint it and I was like yeah that's gonna play real good on an audio podcast bro but uh (laughs) yeah but i I will say like this game definitely got me into that and i read a few reviews on this game and one of them said like i wish every four i I wish every warhammer game was this good or like every soundtrack should be should be like this for a warhammer game so it makes me think that this is a bit of an outlier like i I've played the best one. And if I go, if I'm all excited about Warhammer 40K and I go play another game, because let's face it, this, this Warhammer has hoard themselves out to every single genre, dude. You can play a Warhammer tabletop game, a Warhammer uh, RTS game, an action, mm-hmm. like a first person shooter, an action hack and slash. Like there's all sorts of games out there. But I have a feeling like I'm going to be a little let down because they aren't as good as this one. And, you know, usually when I really get into something like this and I'm like blown away by, by uh, you know, the world building of a game, like, and I want to explore more of it, my natural reaction would be to, you know, what kind of books do they have for this? But I'm also worried that like the books are, they're going to be like young adult books. I think we talked about that last week and just about how like it's hard to read those. And also like so much of this is visual and audio too. Like, I don't know if it's going to, going to come across in a book as well, but if there's some good recommendations out there, let me know. I think I made the mistake with Warhammer back in the day of, um, of, of starting it, like most people I think make this mistake. Their entry point into the Warhammer universe is the Space Marines. And, you know, like the tooltip in FTL said, humans are boring and uninteresting. Like that's the, seriously the most boring part about Warhammer, I feel like, is the Space Marines. I, I don't know who these dudes were that was playing, but these guys were awesome. Like they, they had these big like, <laughs> giant space cathedrals with organ music and they're all like tubes and light beams coming out of them. Like they, hmm. it was incredible, man. I believe they're the Chaos Marines, but don't don't quote me on this. I'm I'm just grasping at straws here. But there is, if you got into War, Warhammer 40k, it would be like getting into, like hearing about. I wouldn't even. I say there's more, yeah, way huge. more lore than Star Wars. Yeah, way more. It's like, yeah. Oh, way so, more. Well, you you think. Like well, Star Wars is huge. I mean, but because it, you're talking about <laughs> millions of books, dude. Well, I mean, Star yeah. Wars is huge, but we always just focus on the same people. You know, giant, yeah, huge right, universe, right. always focusing on the same people. And I feel like Warhammer kind of spreads it out more. There's always the different factions, and each of those factions have all their little yeah, stories in there. So that's true. Yeah, I've never even played any like Warhammer games. The only one I actually played for like a little bit was just Vermintide. And that was because it was more more of my alley, I guess. You know, first person, you know, fucking beating the shit out of people. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Rats. Well, that was Warhammer just straight up. Uh, that's Warhammer. So then if you put the 40K on it, that's 40,000 years in the future from in the then. Future. Okay. Yeah, so it's, a, it's almost like 
it's almost what Bobby said. It's like uh, medieval and then future medieval. It's the same shit, but it's like in space with fuck it. Uh, yeah, the yeah, other yeah. one, Bobby, that I played is there's the four player co op that plays like um, a little bit like Levit. Uh, it was called Space Hulk, and that was that game. Remember, I was talking about it, Bobby. The the um, Space Hulk Tactics. Uh, no, no, Death this is like Death a Wing. that was it. De- Deathwing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's Space Hulk Deathwing. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, and that game was pretty good, man. The fucking the amount of uh, just detail they put into the to the the walls. I was just like blown away with. I, I didn't get too much into it because I couldn't run the uh, one of them. But yeah, I mean, there are some good games out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just got to dig around and find them. I, I guess. Yeah, there's actually there's like an actual bundle with like Space Hulk, Deathwing, and Vermintide too. Like, are they that similar? Is that like a, is that one uh, probably well, bundled together? Yeah, it's probably the same company that made them. Yeah, I uh, the first yeah. Oh well, well, Space Hulk is based on Warhammer. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a Warhammer franchise. Yeah, it's a four, it's a Warhammer 40k game. Yeah. Oh, but it doesn't have the name on it, dude. That threw me off, bro. Fuck, bro. <laughs> so I also played uh, Devolverland Expo, and this is a very clever marketing idea. So um, Devolver Digital which is my favorite publisher, which is weird to have a favorite publisher, but whatever. I like all the games they published, and so they're my favorite publisher. Um, the fuck they, did like, they did like an hour-long presentation. Very, very close to... Uh, it reminded me the most of the Game Awards, the Video Game Awards that just happened. Uh, is, and is, is this their way of like, since E3 was canceled? Yes, it, it's exactly. Okay, that's it's awesome. Joke. It's their joke version of it, kind of. And so the so they have this hour long presentation. You can watch it; it's funny. They they're just like constantly making stupid jokes. I would say out of the fifty minutes, ten minutes is actual game footage, and the rest of them is just doing like SNL skits. And but they're funny. I thought I was laughing. I just didn't have time, so I fast forward through a lot of it. Uh, but it was my brand of comedy, like the the chicks trying to like. She's trying to tell you how awesome something is, and blood's just coming out of her nose and shit. It's just <laughs> Stuff like that. I'm and down so, with this um, right now. It's awesome. uh, so then, the game, which plays like a demo, obviously it's free, is that you're sneaking into E3, or it's the same entrance as E3, they're, they're, um, and going to the Devolver Digital Expo that got canceled because of COVID, but you suck it <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and you can go in there and watch all the fucking trailers and and basically experience the the thing as one person. But there uh, there is a little bit of a game going on. There's the tiny little puzzles. Uh, there is security bots looking for you. But you luckily have a t-shirt launcher that you shoot fucking promotional t-shirts at, and you can knock down the fucking robots as you go around the whole thing and look at these games. And you have quests like watch this trailer, watch this trailer. So. Uh, it's fucking awesome. I, I thought it was a great way of doing this, especially since, you know, they usually have a booth at A3. So mm-hmm. what are we going to spend that money on? We'll give the money to the fucking Shadow uh, Warrior developers and have them build this for us. I mean, I'm guessing. I mean, it felt a lot like a Shadow Warrior game, so mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's Yeah, it was, it was the dev team. Flying Wild Hogs, I think they're called. Yeah, there you go. Um, so anyway, uh, we're checking out. Even if you hate it, it's fucking free and it looks cool. The graphics were way better than I thought they should be for something like this. They look pretty good. They kind of like little cart, like Duke Nukem old like style, like the the new Duke Nukem. Like I I, I can't think of another game that kind of looks yeah. like that. Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, yeah, but it's worth checking out. And um, it's not on the radar, but I'm gonna jump into the radar and put something on there. Uh, one of the games that they were promoting was Carry On, and uh, Carry On. It, am I saying that right? Carrion. Carrion. Uh, is, Carrion? Yeah, it's a it's a side-scroller um, 8-bit adventure game where you are a mutant mass of meat and you kill things. You're, you're like the horror creature, not the humans. You're not the hero in this. And you, this is more like 16-bit. This is not 8-bit. That this looks that's some bit. awesome lighting. It's more like 16 bit, I want to say. Actually, Either if you want to, it's 32 bit 
<laughs> Either way, it looks nice. As this fucking disgusting horror mo- monster that looks like a, a a ball of spaghetti mixed with teeth and blood, and uh, you grow as you kill because it's adding to your mass. And when I was playing the demo, probably six months ago, I played the demo. Um, by the way, almost everything I'm going to talk about here on the radar comes out this month, which July is going to be great for like um, indie games. Uh, the, you know, the bigger you get, and then you can't fit into certain air ducts anymore. So it's almost like the stronger you get physically, the less you can sneak around. So I guess there's some kind of balancing act there. Um, but it's great, man. And it's fucking gory and it's carnage. And like, I remember scaring this woman that was just like having some coffee in her office. And I was like, <laughs> I feel bad how much I scared the shit out of this lady. And then I took her head off. But, uh, and then now I saw a new mechanic in these trailers where you kind of like stick one tentacle in kind of like in the matrix where they plug in to the back of their head and you control that character um and and his friends don't see the one tentacle that's controlling him and you can like manipulate things or shoot them in the head with a gun or whatever it is so that's going to add to the puzzle act element of the whole thing so it's basically a puzzle game wrapped into a hor- horrible hor- horror movie mess of a, yeah it's uh, uh I, I like how they, how they put it here it's a reverse horror game yeah mm-hmm. it looks so neat dude it is really cool looking. I, I, it, I really it, hope that it, holds it gives up. me like a like a Stranger Things vibe too, because of the like the roots or whatever, you know, cause like they're all red and stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but um, it's oh, whoa. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm watching the trailer. I don't. It looks fucking awesome. Fast forward seven months from now, I own this game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I already own it. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they still have the uh, the demo up, which is cool, and the game's twenty bucks being released on July twenty third. Yeah, that far totally away. play the demo. You'll you'll get a gist of what the game is about. Uh, another one that they were promoting was Shadow Warrior three. Bobby, you probably know more about this than I do. Uh, yeah, I mean it's the next Shadow Warrior game. So of course, Shadow Warrior was a game back in the '90s, very, known for being very difficult. It was like a Duke Nukem style game, um, but you played uh, you played this guy with the samurai sword and a bunch of guns. And they remade it, I think, 2013. I want to say, and I played through that, really enjoyed it. The second one came out 2016. I was excited for that, but it was it was more like a Borderlands game. So I got. I, I don't know. It it was still fun, but I was expecting more of just like one single playthrough campaign narrative. And it looks like that's what Shadow Warrior 3 is going going back to. Um, these graphics actually look pretty good. I think they use the Unreal Engine. I remember it was the year that I went to QuakeCon that I saw Shadow Warrior 2. Uh, they had it on a big screen there and they're showing off some video cards right before the game came out. But yeah, it's just another Shadow Warrior game. If you played any of the other ones, you know if you like it or not. Uh, but it's not coming out until next year, so we got to wait a little bit longer on it. it. It's like it's like Duke Nukem. If Duke Nukem was a uh, like it, he's hyper Asian, like uh, stereotypey. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. like, wow, yeah, like, his, I, oh, I totally chopped that guy's head off. Like, yeah, stuff his like name that. is Low Wang, and there's no shortage <laughs> of dick jokes in it. It's just, it's nonstop. Uh, I feel like they changed his voice, dude. He sounds like, he sounds like Dr. Kim from uh, fucking The Hangover. Like, I think they changed his voice. Can we get some audio, Bobby? Can you play the trailer and get some audio so you, I don't sound like a crazy person? Yeah, I mean, I, you guys won't hear sure. it, but I can play it. Oh, well, the audio people will. They're trying to break through the gates. I'll track you down. Oh, really? Yeah. This game makes me want to watch Big Trouble in Little China. These graphics, I don't know. Like, they aren't using any special engine or anything, but they, these games always look so good. They look better than they should be, and I'm not sure what it is about it. But Do I Dynamite, Dynamite says it's the same guy? I guess it was just different in my head then. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds the same to me. All right. I was wrong as usual. Yeah. But, but at but least we have to wait till next game. week. 
Yeah, it's super over the top. Yeah, and they they at the uh, Devolver thing they showed some some more footage of it, but it, it's the ga- the guns are so over the top, and I always like like that with first person shooters. And when they're just like you know what, let's just it, it's cool to have the the realism, military sims, and just you know the the realistic guns. But I, I like when they get a little crazy, and you know your guns shoot shurikens and lightning and stuff. Not to mention all the different abilities. I know I played a Shadow Warrior like either one or two, but like on was it on console? It probably yeah. was because I I do remember playing this, or or maybe it was just very similar. But this was this was a while ago, and it it was just super over the top, fast, like switching from like a samurai sword to like your gun, and mm-hmm. uh, that was really neat. Um, but I didn't even know they were, they were still making those. Like <laughs> when that's yeah. when you mentioned when you mentioned it right now, I was like, oh really? They they want a sequel? Well, they've like done pre- they've done pretty good. They're not like huge games, but like enough people play these games. Let me look up Shadow Warrior Two, and first of all, see how much that's going for. You can buy it for ten bucks. Wow, it's on sale right now. Ten bucks, usually forty, but yeah, I mean they've got thirteen thousand reviews. Oh shit! Very There's positive. Like, like a million people own it on Steam. Yeah, like yeah. it's. It's pretty popular, especially if you like those if you like those old style games like uh, like Painkiller. If you played those back in the day, uh, so Bobby, I wasn't sure. I haven't brought back. What's that? So, so if somebody picked up the free version, which I did, can I play with you on Steam? Do we know the free version of what? Oh, I thought you guys were planning talking about Killing Floor Two. No. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no, you just did that thing where you go away and you come back and you have no idea what's going on. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good uh, but yeah, let's talk about Killing Floor 2 because right now it is free on the Epic Game Store. Uh, there's a few other games that are free too. Um, who cares though? I mean, Killing Floor 2, free, you got to pick that up, man. I, I didn't see this coming. I had no idea this was going to happen, but I'm so glad it did. This is a game I love to get back into during Halloween and Christmas because of the events they do. And, you know, even sometimes if other people are playing it, I'll dip back into it. We got a lot of people in the community that play it. Uh, it's definitely worth picking up, man. This is my favorite wave survival game. Played quite a few of them. This is still my favorite one. It's all about slow motion and headshots. And yeah, if you pick it up on Killing Floor 2 and I load it up on Steam, then we can still play together because when you go into the game, that's where you browse for games. They have a server oh, browser perfect. in there. Uh, I don't know if I load this game up on on uh, Epic, if I'll be able to access all my characters that I had on Steam because I've actually I played so much of this game that I've I, I've leveled up quite a few characters, quite a few classes or perks as they call them in this game. They were actually going to give a different game for free this week. They were going to give Conan out the the online um, MMO version. Exiles, yeah. Exiles. They were going to give that out instead, and then they ended up giving Killing Floor, which, like, I have Killing Floor. I've never played it, but it was, like, I think I got it for free on Steam on some other thing. Well, Killing Floor like, or Killing Floor 2? I think I have both. Yes, has <laughs> Killing Floor 8, dude. Because <laughs> uh, Killing yeah, Floor I 1, I, I played the first one quite a bit. In that game, I always tell this story, and I'll, I'll make it quick for those who have already heard it, but that game, I was there, there was a period of time where I was trying to to build a computer to put in my car. And this was like back in 2010, man, when nobody did that. And this this computer was so low power and so small and it ended up not working out. I used it as a media center, but that computer ran Killing Floor 1. Like Killing Floor 1, you could run that on like a Nokia 3300, man, 3390. Like it just ran on <laughs> anything. And it was a pretty good game. And like two came out and it just did the exact same thing with just better graphics and just leaned into more of all of the stuff that made it great. And like it's, oh, it's so something everybody should have in their library. The only thing is I'll, this game takes up like 40 gigs, I want to say. Oh, okay. It takes up a lot. Emilio, yeah. to answer, so to answer your question, uh, actually on June 30th, uh, they posted Epic Online Service Beta. So uh, Epic Online Service is EOS integrated into dedicated server framework, blah, 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 cross work cross-play compatibility between steam and that so yeah just Sick. work so i'm glad i picked it up yep <clears throat> um bobby you kept uh, mentioning big trouble in little china uh where Kony says he has a friend that's trying to pitch a musical doesn't that sound like a fucking great adaptation with kurt russell 
Oh man, <laughs> I bet he can sing though. Although he's, he's he can, got to, he's got to be ninety years old, right? It's dude, all these actors, dude, they're so fucking talented. Like you only think they act, and then they're finally given that one role where he like has like some epic fucking like opera voice, and you're like, fuck, just yeah. happened. Like it's just fucking <laughs> awesome. Like and Kurt Russell, he probably has that opera voice. I don't know why. I just feel like he, either that or super like R and B ish, like fucking smooth as fuck. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen him sing in a movie, and I don't think I have. A I'll movie. tell you what was terrible though, dude. I saw Ed Harris dance in a movie. That wasn't good. And you could totally Where's tell that? they were trying to they were trying to shoot around it. Like it was all like waist high shots. They punch into a yeah. close up and then like they pull out for like half a second and then go back in. It was in um the Zombie first too? No, no. No. No, Ed Harris. It was, it was oh, Ed in, Harris. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, it was in the first creep show movie. He was in that, and also uh, Ted Danson was in that movie right before he started Cheers, dude. Yeah, watch watch that movie. Holy shit! I think I think he dances in in Westworld. <laughs> I think he dances in Westworld. Ed Harris. Well, I hope he yeah. I hope he got better. I watched the first season. I don't <laughs> think I remember him dancing, but yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if Kurt Russell can sing. Uh, who's that? Uh, Kylo Ren. Like he sang in um, Marriage Story, and there's a new movie coming out that he's supposed to be in. That's supposed to be all singing. So apparently that that kid can sing. They did pretty good. All right, actually. all right. That guy's a good talking about, If we're talking right. about musicals, uh, did you guys watch Hamilton now that it's available publicly? Nope. No. No. Nope. It, it's pretty good. Uh, the music is pretty fucking good. It's I'm funny planning, that I'm planning on watching it like hopefully this week so that uh so that we can talk so that I can talk about it or we can like me my my buddy and I so we can talk it on our on our new podcast. What, you have a new podcast. What? Bobby, Bobby hang, hang up on him, dude. He's 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 playing for another team. He's hijacking the show. <laughs> what? No. What, what if a, what if your your co your co uh, fucking podcasters just slid into shots, dude, from either side? <laughs> I told him like, yeah, you want to just drive over here? Just come in randomly. Like, What's up, guys? <laughs> but, but he was too lazy to drive. Like, he lives really close, actually. He was a friend of mine when I moved. When I we've been friends forever in San Diego, and he moved to LA when I moved to LA to uh, the Artisan too. And uh, he went to film school. I went to audio school. And uh, and yeah, and like we're st- we started. We have two episodes, but we ha- we're going to release them together. Hopefully this Wednesday. It's a pop culture podcast. So it's about Netflix, movies, uh, Kim Kardashian's booty. If it comes up on, you know, something happens or Kanye doesn't for president <laughs> or uh, not really. Maybe some video game stuff like, you know, like PS5, Xbox, you know, stuff like that. Not really going to hit it, uh, video games that hard. It's more um, like I wanted to show you guys a clip uh, from the episode recorded yesterday, but I, I, I messed up the encoding or something, and I fucking erased it accidentally. Oh but my god, a, dude! But I have the a whole episode. <laughs> yes, he doesn't know this, dude. But uh, but like, I'll fix it. Like, uh, is I it live? Is it on iTunes? It, it'll it'll go live on Wednesday. We're working on the intro music. We have one of our buddies doing. Uh, his brother actually, he's a hip hop producer, so he's making the intro and like the outro for it. Uh, it's called. It was originally called Upload Culture. And it's and our our little model was like um, all the shit that's been uploaded. I mean, your weekly dose of shit that was uploaded to the internet. Um, right. And it's just we just like our first episode. We just hit COVID and Black Lives Matter a lot because that was pretty much what the internet has been happening. Like uh, that's all it's about in cancel culture. Like we spoke about that, and then at the very end, we were like some pop some some pop culture stuff. We're like, oh Disney. And we're like, okay. But, like, you know, we're still really trying to get the rhythm for it. But we're, uh, I don't know. I think, I think it's sounding, this, the episode yesterday, I think it was good. I, it was the first one was just like the quality was shit. Cause, like, um, I had everything mic'd wrong for some reason. And then you can hear the fridge in the background the whole time. So that wasn't good. And then I finally fixed it for the, for when we recorded yesterday. And I just got, we're gonna upload it. Hopefully, have the website and everything up. And um, and yeah, dude, it's just it's a pop culture podcast. Um, it's it's fun. I gave so you guys that, a, I I gave you guys name? a shout out yesterday. <laughs> oh, now so it's it's gonna be called up up culture. Just cut it off. Up culture. We, we made a brand new word, dude. If you Google it, it's oh, nice. Exist. There's a bunch of like Indian people dancing. That's <laughs> that's all I can find for it. 
And um, but yeah, up culture. It's a up culture podcast. It's just it's a pop culture right. podcast. Uh, me and cool, a buddy man. of mine and uh, Diego phoned in yesterday, and you know, same thing you and I did last time. We made fun of him most of the time, so. Yeah. <laughs> he's so easy to make fun of dude. Yeah, dude. and like we, we we were talking about how you know they're renaming uh uh splash mountain and uh and and what we were talking about it uh the call disconnected because diego was lagging on discord and then when he came back in we're like dude we like bagged on him for 20 minutes and you were gone and it was awesome and then we spoke we spoke about like splash mountain and he's like what so did you know and he just fucking went into like all this crazy information that i had no clue about like uncle remus getting an honorary academy award yet we're shunning like it but it's still like a crazy racist movie so we you know we, we went into those topics and uh covid dreams uh some stuff that we been going through which uh you guys check it out so hopefully a wednesday will be up and then um yeah it'll be up culture every, everyone up culture Cool, man. Of course, your podcast. It'll be on Apple and Spotify. I'm glad you're doing something with all that extra time. Yeah, dude. It's like, it's cool. Dude, like, I, when he came over, it was just like, you don't have COVID, right? Because like, I want to see people. And <laughs> can, I, can I hug you? <laughs> want to <laughs> like, touch penises? Wanna, seriously, I, I don't mind right now. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, if I were, if, any recommendation, dude? Or like, do you guys have show notes? Yeah, yeah, of course, dude. Like, I learn from the best. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> just keep them loose, dude. Just keep, yeah. them, especially for yours. Just keep it. Don't do stringent one, two, We're not. three, so, four. So, so for the first episode, we did that, but we went off on such a rant on the yeah. first thing, and then you we, can't. We it's 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 different because you know for like for PC gaming you, you're talking about game after game after game and news and news and news and we're doing like pop culture and then we get into some like really cool I don't know just a really cool like sensitive topic and then but the thing is it's comedic you know like he's a writer he's a writer here in Hollywood and um in, and and he does stand up and he's way funnier than I am and um not hard and, uh, really really. Uh, <laughs> So, um, and he's, uh, and like, he knows his shit. So, so like he, he goes into these topics, like I'm learning shit from him. And then like, whatever I know too, you know, we throw it in and we're hitting these sensitive topics, but you know, we'll throw in some fucking, you know, really, yeah, really not some fucked up jokes. <laughs> See, that's basically what we have going on. See, Bobby knows everything and I don't uh -huh. know shit. Well, I pretend not to know shit <laughs> because I'm assuming that the the uh, the listeners don't know shit. Yeah. So they're learning through me. They're like, oh, I'm is an idiot, but I'm actually learning. So I'll just continue being dumb. And uh, yeah, yeah. here we go. That's what we do. But yeah, dude, no, like we have we have we had the notes. But like, for instance, yesterday we had we were going to talk about South Park um, from the from their latest two seasons, like how, how, how crazy they've gone and how. They've been like doing hashtag cancel self, but we never got to it. We never did. Like we we ended up going through all this stuff, and we were like two hours and a half, and we're like, "Yo, it's two hours and a half, and the hosting I'm getting, it's actually only gives us 400 megabytes a month, so we gotta cut it right now. We can't go that long." But uh, um, oh, uh, Captain Gummy just uh, he he confirmed as long as you have a mask on, you can still touch penises. So oh, okay. okay. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh. I don't have Twitch on, so I can't do the chat. <laughs> oh, they've been talking to you nonstop, dude. No, oh, man, I totally missed it. I mean, where are we at, Bobby? Keep this, keep this on. Where, track. where are we at? I yeah. have no idea, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you just Rocket did Arena. Floor two. You just did Killing Floor Two. Okay, yeah. So Rocket Arena. Uh, Rocket Arena is coming out in two days. It is a three v three first person um arena game a uh, shooter game and it's all rockets like every gun is a rocket launcher uh, it's a hero shooter so you have your characters and they have their special abilities but um it's rocket jumping it's blast damage and the graphics are pretty good coming out of somebody who i've never heard of final strike games let's click on them see what they have under their belt um i guess they worked on it apex is that right? No. Apex. Oh no, Legends. it's 
They what? Sorry, I missed it. No, no. Um, I just clicked on Final Strike Games and it took me to EA's page. So uh, they haven't done anything that I've seen before. Uh, but the graphics look pretty good. Um, little pixar I guess. There's even a Disney princess looking one. There's one that looks just like Elsa. I think she's ice-based. Uh, but yeah, so it's a hero shooter with rockets. Looks fun. Very we, good trailer. We Check talked about this game... I think when I, I was like one of, one of my last episodes, I think I, think I don't remember this at all. I because I I've, I've I've seen this before. I just and I don't remember. I think so. Maybe I don't know. Actually, I, know. I own this game. <laughs> <laughs> I totally do, the, dude. But only rockets, really. I, just, uh, I don't know, man. We we played a game loadout that was heavily rocket based, mm-hmm. and um, it was fun, dude. We played the there's shit a, out of the game. There's a lot a of month. different guns in that game. Oh. It's it's EA. Is it going to be on Origin? Because I still pay for Origin. I, Maybe. Wonder, is I mean, it's three hundred bucks on Steam for that price. I don't know, man. But usually the the EA games are a lot more expensive on Steam, or they're they're, they're never yeah. discounted. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was part of Origin Access. They still have yet to come out with that version of Origin Access that's supposed to work with Steam. Mm-hmm. Thirty bucks for this seems a little steep, but like I said, the graphics are there. If it's a fun game, I don't know. 30, 30 bucks still seems. For 3v3, seems like not a whole lot. But uh, we'll see when it comes out. We'll see some reviews, and then we'll go from there. Hopefully, yeah, it's on Origin Access. So if you have Origin Access, you'll be able to play it there. There we go. Like it's live now? No, or, it's not live yet. You, no. you can add to library. Preload is now available. Origin Access premiere release date July 13th. So tomorrow, you can at 7 a.m., you can actually start playing this game. On Origin, cool. you, I, you, I, I don't even remember if I still pay for you it. You still have Origin? I think I you think accidentally I, bought it, into another year. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I did. I I accidentally did that too. I didn't want to. Yeah. I was that's like, how they get you, dude. Yeah, and you forget, and you just get charged, and you're like, oh, I don't want to. Oh, we're sorry, we can't do customer service. We're sorry, so we can't do shit about it. It's like, yeah, you can. Stop fucking lying, bitch. Like, and, me, and meanwhile, meanwhile, and meanwhile, they're not building. They're, it's not like Xbox Game Pass that it's. Hmm. They have a five dollar model, and their model is get as many people by having awesomeness all the time every month. I feel like Origin was like, let's offer crazy good stuff right off the bat, so everybody signs up for the year, and mm-hmm. then for, put it in the closet, and forget about and it. Yeah, and just forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like um, Xbox game. Remember we this was on the podcast when I was on. There was a game called Grounded, and it was like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, mm-hmm. like. It's like a survival. Oh, that comes up later. I think I put it in the notes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I did it. I decided not to because we talked oh. about it a couple times already. But so yeah, go ahead. That, Sorry. So that one's gonna be an Xbox Game Pass, and I'm super excited for that game. That actually game looks really, really, really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that probably looks good. Yeah, we talked yeah. about it on on the radar a while back, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's getting close to release. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's I'm fucking stoked that it's on I, Game Pass. Yeah, I can't wait to play that. Did you play Minecraft Dungeons? Did you try it yet? No, but I was thinking about getting it on the Switch for uh, Sam and Mia to play together because I've heard it's like a dumbed-down dungeon crawler, so I think they could have a lot yeah. of fun with that. Well, like, Fastidious was loving the shit out of it. It's like, it's such a great Diablo clone and blah, blah, blah. You should play. And I'm like, it's still <laughs> Minecraft. Like, I like Minecraft. You know, I'll, I'll, we currently have <laughs> we currently have a Minecraft server, and it is ridiculous. Um, I've heard about the things that happen on your Minecraft server. Oh, did you, did, you, did, you, did you see any? They made they made they made Adelitas and uh you know Adelitas <laughs> and this, yeah they made a strip joint dude and uh I'm making a subway system Daniel made like a big ass castle there's like an upside down Luxor and we're having a lot of fun with it right now it's just a bunch of thirty year old men and Diana uh playing Minecraft <laughs> and it's actually been kind of fun but uh Minecraft Dungeons dude like I I'm totally curious like dude I just to try it out with a group of friends like could just do like a like a format and just like try to go through it like in the hardest setting because I, I doubt it's fucking hard you know what i mean uh yeah uh from the reviews it was like this is a solid dungeon crawler nothing new but it has the ip so people like it i i'm sure it's a good game I, I, that's what the reviews say we should totally um do the next one is neon abyss hey guys have you ever heard me talk about a rogue light action platformer before because here's another one uh but guys it's not like every roguelite that's announced i talk about 
<laughs> I only talk about the ones that only actually half. like only half of them. Yeah. <laughs> only about the ones that actually grab my attention. And uh, if you play some of this uh, video, Bobby, yeah, you'll be able to see um, it really. Uh, here's things that I really like about these games. One, it's important to me that you can see the eye you pick up on your body. I don't know why that's important, but like in Binding of Isaac, whatever mutation you can pick up, like if you have bloody tears, you have bloody eyes. And, and it just goes on and on and on, and your, your character ends up looking crazy at the end of it. Uh, but then another one that I like is synergies. So like if you have 200 items and you get four specific ones and it doesn't even seem like on paper they would work together, just to look, see what that looks like, that's what this game looks like it has in droves. If you just look a little bit at the, the guns that he's shooting, you can tell that it's all about the synergies. Um, you know, you grab this power up, then that power up, then that power up, and it's all random, right? You, who knows what you're going to end up getting? If you just watch the trailer, I can't, I can't explain it to you, but it seems like this plasma weapon that he's shooting modifies itself to all these different characters uh, it's almost like i'm hoping <laughs> i i can't base any of this i've never read anything about it but from what i can see that's what it's doing and that's what i love about these games um anything from rockets to to shotgun mode to bouncing bullets to uh spread shot and it just goes on and on add fire add water water and fire what's that do together and then you just keep that's what I love about game. Uh, infinite possibilities. It's so and cool. So, it's like it's so cartoony yet so fucking gruesome. It looks really neat. I love the colors and the music. Yeah, dude, the music it, it brought it together really good, it really well. And this is what you have to do in these. You know, I haven't brought it up yet, but three weeks ago, uh, a pro, a, uh, a dev team sent me a game, and I played it. And I still mean to review it, but I keep forgetting to put it on the show notes, and I'll do it next week, I guess. It is like the third week now, because it was a very forgettable action roguelike. Like, it's a super crowded field now. You have to do... You can't just be doing what I was talking about. You have to look great. You have to sound great. Or at least do something so out of the box that nobody's done it before. And if you're not doing any of those things, you're going to fall by the wayside. So yeah. at least this game is like visually impressive uh, right off the bat. So, and I'm even excited to play. I just want to see what I can make that gun do. You know what I mean? Mm. All right. It looks good. Comes out July 14th and there's a demo yeah. of it. Uh, no price on it yet, even though it's coming out in just a few days here. I'm, I'm guessing fourteen ninety nine, and my high buy um, maybe twenty one ninety nine. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think this would be over twenty bucks. Seems like a fifteen dollar game. Yeah, I want to say fourteen ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine. But you never know. Uh, this. It's fucking Team Seventeen as as the publisher, so they might go a little bit more expensive to twenty nine ninety nine. They're the Worms guys, right? Yep, those are the Worms guys. All right. Before we forget, we had a subscription earlier in the show. Darth Duck, 11 months. Thank you very much, man. Thanks, homie. Hopefully you're still around. That was a while ago, but thank you. <laughs> Fucking Darth. I haven't game with him. We we played... Uh, last time I played with Darth. Lance? No, we played uh, Street to Rage 4. Did, did, did you guys try yet? Yeah, I wasn't a fan, man, personally. It got really good reviews. I... I just I feel like they were they were playing um, fan service to people who used to play it. Yeah, yeah. I I, yeah. I thought it was cool. Um, we got to a certain part where like it just got really fucking hard, and we died twice, and it was just like, hey, cool. We'll never play this yeah. game ever again. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, okay. That said, me and Chad did play like three hours straight, uh, or maybe even four hours, and we got like almost through the whole game. I feel like, and then yeah, same thing. We died a couple times, and we're like, yeah. Well, that was enough of that. Yeah, you know? yeah no, you get you get over that shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up, we got Death Ground. This is a solo and co-op survivor horror game that throws players into a desperate battle for survival against deadly AI dinosaurs. Bobby, if 
God or something came down and was like, hey, secretly make a video game for Bobby. This is pretty much what I would build for you. I don't know <laughs> if it'd be right, but first of all, it has dinosaurs. Second of all, it's co-op. Third of all, it has classes, so everybody has their own job. I don't know how many classes. Yeah, I don't know how many classes there are or what their jobs are, but it has that too. Mm -hmm. um, also, it's not an act. It's not like uh, Left 4 Dead, where you're killing hordes of dinosaurs, because that would be first of all cruel, and second of all, <laughs> kind of weird killing all these dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. um, it's from what I can, what I gather, what I've seen, what I've read, it's a little more like Alien Isolation in co-op. So mm -hmm. you're trying to get objectives done, like like um, you're trying to reboot the fucking the generator, but it takes multiple steps, and you got to do all that without getting caught. But there's three of you doing it, so potentially there's a lot of good here. I'm hearing all good things. Except for Jaw Drop Games, haven't heard from them. They made a game called Gun Jam. Uh, let's see how Gun Jam did. Also not out. So, hmm. so yeah, we don't right. know. But it looks like they, have they have a lot of good ideas. Is it like a like maybe it's like a GTFO kind of type with like objectives and roles and stuff like that too? Could be. Like uh, it's, you know, it's scary as fuck because like. I'm I'm gonna get creeped out because I, I I just watched the trailer and just hiding from like fucking Velociraptors, dude. That's fucking awesome. It just reminds me of Jurassic Park and the kids in the kitchen, you know. And yeah. I seen the reflection of the Velociraptor, and it just fucking crashes into like the fucking whatever countertop or whatever. It's so awesome. Uh, and one of the players has a um, kind of like a movement scanner, a la like Alien. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, a lot of ideas, but. Until I see it, see it in front of me, who knows? But Bobby, tentatively excited. I mean, it looks good, but it, it all depends. It's a lot of good ideas, but uh, yeah, you know, exactly. That's the easy part. Um, I've seen stomping lands all over again, right? Oh God, <laughs> let's, uh, let's not even curse it like that. As um, long as it's not Dino Crisis, dude. Seriously. Oh yeah, that famously bad game. It did well. I feel like. Financially, it was a success. No, well, you you could buy it for like a dollar, and it kind of became a meme to get it and play it. It actually, I don't know. It's, it wasn't the worst game in the world, but it was. Uh, yeah, it was just kind of one of those games everybody latched onto to shit on. But this any does not have. Gonna, a, what's that? Any chance you're going to back this, Bobby? On Kickstarter, I don't know. Possibly. Let's take a look at their Kickstarter page here. Yeah, let's do that. Fourteen hundred. And 19 backers, they've reached half their goal. Their goal is $100,000. They've got about 50,000, 25 days to go. So they're on their way. Hmm. I'm not going to help, but they're on their way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. There's no shortage of good games to play right now. So, And I'm not going to hold That's my true. breath. But they, they're right. playing with some good ideas here. All right, the last game. game. The special character classes, dude, they look like a bunch of fucking hipsters, dude. Like, look at the guy with the rifle and just the cargo shorts. <laughs> and the other two has got a beanie and, like, I swear, I thought they were flip-flops for a second, but never mind in their shoes. But um, I don't know about that, dude. It looks kind of weird. Mm. It's a dude with a beard and a little rifle. Just I don't know. I don't, I don't trust that guy to be killing fucking crazy-ass dinosaurs, dude. I'm not down. Fast forward to uh, our Christmas episode. Bobby's like, game of the year goes to <laughs> Death Ground. I didn't see it coming. I did not support them in the beginning, but uh, now they okay. support me. That would be quite a twist. It, I'd be amazed if they didn't come out this year, honestly. Like, that doesn't seem like it's like coming out anytime soon. Seems like a 2021 release. It All sounds right. like we're shitting on them. We are not shitting on them. It's just that we've seen this before. Yeah, I've got a real a lot of good idea attitude towards a lot of these games. I yeah. can't remember the last good fucking dinosaur game, to be honest. Anything like when was the last one where you were we were killing the dinosaurs? I don't remember. I can't think of it's, any. It's anime animal cruelty these days, dude. You can't kill dinosaurs. You can't. They're extinct. You can't kill them more. You can't did extinct you them more. Did you ever play Turok? She was awesome. Oh, there we go. Ark. <laughs> Oh, Ark, Ark yeah. survival evolved. 
Ark. Yeah, I, I I don't like that game. What was the uh, what was the um, simulation game where you build the dinosaur theme theme park? That, that was just was Jurassic it? World. Jurassic World is that what that one was called? Yeah, it's World Evolution. Oh yeah, Evolution. That's what it was. I yeah, forgot. Did you play it, Bobby? No, no, I haven't. I have a free copy if anyone wants it. I might Send check it, it out eventually. Like the, it, f- what I heard about that game is it's really good, but you reach a point where it's just like you're completely over it, which I mean is fine. You know, if you can get a good 20, 30 hours out of a game and then, you know, complete saturation, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I got it in the Humble Bundle, but I already owned it. So I have a free copy if any of you guys want it, want to try it. Let me know. Hmm. All right. Oh, uh, what is what are you guys' uh, – Days just mentioned it. What's your interest level on Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn uh, coming to PC? Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about this game. Everybody seems to love it. Uh, and I didn't see it coming to PC, PC because um, I believe – Because Sony's such a bitch on that. Yeah, side. yeah. Sony's usually such a bitch about, about third-party games. But um, here it is. Anybody going to play it? I own it on PlayStation. I've never played it. <laughs> I <laughs> dude, I just gotta stop. Um, maybe one day I'll play. <laughs> I, I bought I it at, uh, at at GameStop. It, it was like five bucks, uh, yeah. like for the fucking Blu-ray. It's five oh. bucks. I got it, and it was and it was like the the definitive super edition with every like all the DLCs and shit. I so, remember Chad got it uh, like on Friday, and he beat it by the time he had to go to work on Monday. Like he just stayed up all like. You know, one of those fucking crazy. It's times. supposed to be he really. Did not put it down. Yeah, it's supposed to be a really, really, really great game. Uh, I've every person I've I've heard speak about this game has been like, "You're missing out," and that's why when I was when I was at GameStop, I think I was just buying something super random, um, and I saw it there, and I'm like, "Eh, fuck it," you know, I'm, I'll buy it. And I, I I remember I got home, installed it, watched the intro movie like 4K, and it was like, "Dude, it looks fucking awesome!" Like PlayStation games just look so much better than like most like pc games I, it's, I don't know what it is like god of war 4k like on your tv looks amazing i don't i still haven't excuse seen me it. sir do you for <laughs> Dude, do you forget I, where you're at right now I'm just saying sometimes fucking console games look really really fucking great but um and, and uh because you know diego the other day he bought the the best uh, AMD graphics card they have right now, like 57 XT or whatever. I don't, I don't forget which one it is. The best AMD one. He bought it and and he he put on Call of Duty, put in like the highest settings that he, that would let him on his monitor, and he was just like, eh. he was like, I don't I don't feel it, dude. Like, like it doesn't look as crazy as like when I was playing on my Xbox, you know, Xbox One, whatever. And I'm playing this game on 4K, and I'm like, what's different? You know, it's like there are PC games that have great fucking graphics. And they, you know, and the, and the better graphics card doesn't improve your graphics; it improves your frame rate and how to play the game. And I guess he doesn't understand that concept, and he returned the GPU because <laughs> he and, didn't. And get. it's not just, it's not just that too. It's like these consoles have. It was eight years since the last one, right? So they've been getting every fucking square inch of potential out of that, uh, yeah, of that hardware for eight fucking years. And so mm-hmm. they know everything. When you when you make a game for PC, you have to make it for every video card, every Nvidia card, every Radeon card. Yeah. You need it you need it to work on everything. So the final product's gonna suffer because it has to be played by uh, somebody's potato fucking PC and it's gotta be played by Captain Sabaho who buys yeah. uh, every single hour spends ten thousand dollars on his rig. Yeah. So Anyway, there we go. Uh, yes, I want to play this game actually. Out of, and it'll probably look better on PC than it does on PS4. Like I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to see how this, how this is gonna look. I'm tempted to see how uh, Death Stranding is gonna look next week too. When I think Death Stranding comes on next week or the week after on on PC. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I, it looked amazing on PlayStation 4. I bet it has to look way better on fucking PC with the highest settings and like even more. Even, like you can play it on your monitor and like even wider. So that's, like, yeah, they, it says ultra wide support now. Yeah, no. same thing with Death Stranding. Um, JD Construction, uh, which JP Diddy or John or wh- whatever you want to call him, uh, he's a fantastic game. I played all through it and the DLC. Very tempted to play it again on PC. So mm-hmm. that's how good again he's, you know, he 
be down for playing it even again. So it's mm-hmm. it's a good game. And so I might be taking a look at it. Hmm. Hey Sony, if you need a little uh publicity, come come talk to dad. Come, <laughs> come talk to me. daddy. <laughs> well, August seventh, fifty bucks is what you're looking at for wow. Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh fifty dollars, dude. I don't yeah. know. I got it for I'm telling you like four ninety nine at GameStop, dude. <laughs> yeah, you so, yeah, dude. pay a premium when it comes to PC. Man. I'm ri- I'm writing a very viciously worded email to Steam right now talking about <laughs> Ray my friend Ray picked up this game for five dollars on the bargain bin and you're charging yeah. me fifty bucks for it. <laughs> Uh, the next game up is Liberated. Um, I think somebody probably put this up here, Bobby, because you said that you like games that look like comic books. Uh-huh. And yeah. holy shit, does this game look like a comic book? Yeah, we talked about this one before. Yeah, um, but back then, I believe there was only a little bit of video, and it showed there was just that train scene, if I remember right. And we weren't sure if it was like puzzle or whatever, but now we can see that there's definitely shooting in the game. Um it almost looks like um, like a 2D action action platformer, maybe. It, yeah. It, man, it looks a lot like Shadow Complex, if you ever played it before, um, where it's a 2D field, but a 2.5D, and then the mouse aims at whatever you aim at. So, uh, but it looks like a noir comic book Mm -hmm. and it looks fucking awesome literally the exact same thing we said last time we talked about this game yeah (laughs) right down to the shadow complex no there was one trailer they had one trailer they did show gameplay we saw shooting it was in comic book panels and there was like the blap 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 coming from the gun yeah i mean it looks like i don't remember any shooting last time it was because it was part of that um steam thing where people were streaming all these new games there was like a ton of new games that were coming out indie games and people were streaming them you couldn't get the demos just yet um but yeah you could watch somebody play this game we talked uh, about gotcha. it yeah. i remember mm-hmm. i do not remember it was Sorry, a while ago everybody. it was about three months ago <laughs> it's all right yeah, it's a good reminder yeah. because the game's coming out july 2020 so within a couple of weeks here right around the corner and it does look good no price yet but if I had to guess, twenty bucks, maybe I don't know. I'd say twenty bucks. I can't imagine that there's too much content here. All right, we ready we got, for news? Uh, let's get do some housekeeping. Uh, is there any more thank yous you got to do, Bobby? Uh, no, is that's that it? it. So, uh, DLG Con twenty twenty, we are just about sold out. Uh, we went down to a smaller house. And uh, there's only one room left. That room is the pretty princess pony room. I uh, saw the room today. Is. I was laughing my yeah. ass off. Dude. It's like <laughs> pink and beautiful and dolls. Like it's, it's, it's clearly, it's clearly. I feel like that masculine. room is for me. Like I feel like <laughs> I should stay at that room. Like I, I, I want you guys to walk in and see. Me. I'll be like, hey. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hello. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's fucking awesome, dude. But, I remember uh, this is for four <laughs> nights, right? Uh, the last room. This is the last. I think it's a queen bed in there. Um, it is pink, so we took fifty dollars off. But this last room, we don't need it. The, the, it it's game on. We already bought the house. It's good to go. It's gonna happen. Um, you're only gonna help us out by coming out and uh, supporting us and getting the last room. Uh, we are going to be playing board games, video games, Smash Brothers, fucking uh, Quiplash, Booze. Uh, there's a pool. Um, you can get all this information on uh, Discord if you click on DLGCon2020. You go there. You can find the link to the house. And, uh, yeah, that shit. So I heard the that. last room is I 450 heard. bucks. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I heard JP Diddy was practicing for uh to show us another fucking Beat Saber fucking crazy dance off. Dude, how impressive was that, dude? I know, right? Yeah. He, uh, he, <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen a you said ever ever seen a two hundred seventy five pound man play expert mode on Beat Saber? Fucking come to 
TwitchCon 2020, Ben. Uh, you're going to see amazing things. Uh, but yeah, it's a good time. Well, we we shouldn't out. call it TwitchCon because it's actually not going to coincide. DLD, right. Yeah, it's not going to coincide yeah. with TwitchCon anymore. It's going to be in November. It's a mm. Freudian slip, man. <laughs> it's because, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I believe it's a queen bed. And so you could fit two people in there. Uh, 450 for the four nights. And yeah, it's going to be an amazing time. So there's one or two slots left, however you want to look at that. Uh, if you wanna, if you're interested, again, go to go to join our Discord and go to TwitchCon 2020. All right. uh, DLGCon 2020. Sorry. DLGCon. Yep. Um, yeah. Now we can get into news. All right. Time for some news. We've got a few articles here. Uh, first one is from PC Gamer. Sony invests. Okay, you can't click and drag tabs between a normal window and incognito. Apparently. Anyway, Sony invests $250 million into Epic Games. Uh, so this is an article on PC Gamer, and it talks about um, Sony buying into Epic, which, uh, you know, it's interesting. Tencent did this back in the day, um, of course, at a, a much better time, and uh, they probably made a ton of money off it. But it looks like Sony wants a piece of that, too. Uh, they've made some statements about it. Basically, they, they look forward to making content with Epic gaming music and video so this got me thinking i am so surprised we have not seen a Fortnite movie yet it seems like that would have happened by now but maybe that's something in the near future i dude but Fortnite's dying man like i i sadly introduced not sadly but like i introduced Fortnite to gia she's eight years old now and she plays she loves it, you know, she loves it. But, you know, there's a part of me that goes, ah, she's eight. She shouldn't be, like, killing people right now. <laughs> like, she went from Minecraft and <laughs> yet. seen stuff and Animal Crossing to, like, bra 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 sniper rifle. You know, it's just, I, but then, you know, I kind of wanted that a little bit. So, like, oh, let's <laughs> team up, you know. But, um, but we were, like, we played duos, like, here and there. And the server, dude, that was, it, like, it's 100 people. I want to say 80 to 90 are bots. And there's like ten people on there, like on your server, that are actual real people. Like you're, you're getting dude, all these. Like, I don't think they're bots, dude. I think they're eight year olds. No, 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 no. Like, no, they're bots. Like the names don't even make sense. You know, it's like like Snazzy Shark six five six seven seven three 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 four four four, and then you see like a world symbol where it it, it, it doesn't show PC symbol nor you know eight year olds, dude. No, no. Dude, do you want to know what it, did Mila's fucking screen name is? It's. It's like marshmallow. It's mar yeah, I know. Yeah, it's marshmallow. Yeah, yeah on uh, Roblox. Yeah, yeah. See, like that's, that's what they should be playing all the time. But uh, <laughs> but no, like I I see the um, it it next to the name, it'll show you what console they're like if they're either playing console or or, or oh, right, right. If they just have a world, that means that means that they're bots. I think that's what it means because like they're horrible, dude. But then some bots are super OP. Like they're like ridiculous they'll see you and just instantly headshot you and some crazy shots and that pisses me off actually like we've we've gone close to like oh you know we're about to win sweetie yay she's all excited and then some some bot just jumps midair goes back and just kills me like super ridiculous and and you know he's a bot the game's over and it's like oh it's a bot one and you're like fuck i just says that robot. no it doesn't say the bot one it says it'll <laughs> show a really dumb you're movie. worse than a robot congratulations <laughs> seriously no, but they're really dumb names. Like they're super. They're, it's like cricket soldier, you know, like something like that. They're really, really dumb. Yeah, you know, like gamer handles. So yeah. I I think you're you're over over complimenting how how good eight year olds at naming their characters. <laughs> I just I I feel like actually I'm gonna like number of bots in Fortnite. Like it's just eighty nine bots. Turns out the game had 89 bots and just 11 human players. See, like, people have been noticing that in the game. 89 bots have been, like, in, like, I'm not saying every game, right? But people have gone in and they found out that it was just bots. And then when you're in the loading screen, the people that are real, they're running around throwing stuff at you, you know, like. And then the bots are just standing there, like, ready to the game start, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, they're bots. So, like, it's, game's kind of dying. I'm like. Ninja's well, I don't think I don't think Sony's trying to get a piece of that Fortnite action. I think they're looking to do something else with Epic. Like they're probably going to create something new. They should. Maybe they not a new putting, game, but something new. They're putting the 
your first party games on fucking Epic, I will I will I will start two more accounts on Epic. Like um, if I could play The Last of Us one and two, if I could play God of War, Spider Man, I would be super stoked. I've Dude, always wanted to play those games. You could have played um Spider Man with uh PlayStation Now. They were doing like because of COVID, they were doing a special where like they were letting you stream newer PS4 games on your on your PC. So hundreds of PS4, PS3, PS2 games, and they had um What's that gonna cost me? Nine nine ninety nine a month. Huh. Nine ninety nine a month, or you can pay fifty nine ninety nine for a whole year. And they have uh like dark like the Dark Soul games, but like you're you're playing like from a PS3 perspective, right? From a PS2 or a PS4, but they had Spider-Man. Diego played Spider-Man the other day. And that way, I, that way, and he was he was loving it. Uh, but I, out of all those games that I just mentioned, that's probably the one, the least important one. But I, I do right now they it. have Control. Like Control's supposed to be a great game, and it's available until uh, well, August thirty first. Anyway. I know, but you're but you're playing. You're only paying ten bucks, and you can play Control. Oh, gotcha. you know what I mean? hmm. So. But I think they took away right, Spider Man. Right. They, they they let me see Spider Man, Spider Man. Yeah, they took away Spider Man already. Hmm. Too bad. Yeah. Uh, I did not mention that uh, DLG Con will be on November twelfth. We moved it up a uh, few months actually, so um, that gives you more time to plan and figure out whether or not you can come down from Canada, sniper. God damn it. It's not that far, bro. Just fucking drive. No, it's not that. They're, they're <laughs> legally cannot cross the border. Oh, COVID? Because of COVID? Yeah. No? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's good. Because they'll just bring more COVID over here. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're that's like, what they're worried about. I know, right? They're like done with, like, I think Canada is one of the best ones right now with like the least amount of cases. Yeah, yep. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised though. All right, next article is Ready Player Two. The sequel to Ready Player One will be out in November. This is referring to the book. Oh, the so, book. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Ernest Klein announced two years ago that he was working on a sequel, and it looks like it is coming out right around the corner. You can actually pre-order it on Amazon right now, both the audio book and the uh, hardback or paperback. Bobby, did you read the book? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I read okay. It. Yeah, we I thought someone, someone asked us about this. I think Cricket Soldier asked us about this in listener questions last week about the movie. The and, movie, uh, yeah. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it. So, yeah, I mean, I will probably uh, read the book, but my tolerance for young adult fiction has gone way down, dude. I read those big boy books, man. Big Russian novels, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, you know what I'm reading right now is Starship Troopers. And I've never read that book before. And I know that's Chad's favorite book. Yeah. And I know he was very upset about the movie. And um, it, the same thing is happening to me uh, as when I read Dune. Because the Dune movie that David Lynch made back in the 80s, not a lot of people like that one. But when I read the book, I'm like, I actually get this movie now. Like, I totally get it. And I enjoy the movie so much more. And I mean, I'm only about six chapters into Starship Troopers, but it, I, I am already finding new appreciation for the movie. Like, I don't think they executed like right on the money what they needed to do, but I definitely see how they tried and what they were going for. And it, it is kind of nice to have the, the visual with it. But yeah, I'm enjoying that one. On uh, Reddit, there's these, uh, there's a subreddit called Movie Details. And one for that one was that, so he was trying to push that co-op shower scene, right? Where everybody's naked, the boys and the girls are naked together. Mm -hmm. And I guess the actors said that they would only do it if the director directed it naked. So he took off his clothes and he directed it naked. Yeah, Yeah. that doesn't surprise me. Paul Verhoeven's pretty crazy. But in the book, it's not co-ed. You said co-op and I almost said it too, but uh, it wasn't co-ed. There was no women in um in training oh yeah uh i i feel like um chad's ender's game was was uh that book yeah well, uh, starship re- troopers what's crazy that book was written in 1959 i mean i guess dune was written in the 60s but a lot of these a lot of these books that you know we've seen the movies for them now but like a lot of these books were like super old crazy 
But yeah, Ready Player Two, I will probably check it out. I, I really wonder where they're going to go with it because you know the first one they really kind of wrapped everything up. It's like yeah, yeah problem solved. You know, what are they going to do? Like, is the evil corporation going to rise again and they're going to have to fight back? Or I don't know. I don't know, man. Bobby, mortgages need to be paid, Bobby. <laughs> Hey, that's true, man. I, th- what do you? This guy has got it made, man. He bought that DeLorean. Like he has been spending his money like a nerd <laughs> would. Like if you maybe that's seen, the problem. <laughs> maybe I don't know. It doesn't seem like this guy has any short. I don't know what they paid to get that movie made. I mean, they had Spielberg directed it, made a ton of money. Like if he took any points on the back end, that guy's made even more money than he did off the book. I'm sure he's doing fine financially. He did write another book after Ready Player One, and it didn't do well at all. Like, it did pretty terrible, and I can't remember what that one is. Hmm. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Yeah. All right, next article. Um, that article, by the way, was on PC Gamer too. This next article is from Eurogamer.net, and yes, I will accept all cookies. Uh, it says, The Sims is getting a reality TV show. Um, what does this even mean (laughs) i know dude let me explain i read the article Uh, i'll play (laughs) i'll play the trailer here there is a trailer you can check it out um they're gonna have people playing the sims 4 hopefully they get all the thousands of dollars worth of dlc and it's gonna be kind of like a, a challenge game show where they have to make certain things happen and then contestants get eliminated each week so it's like a competition um let me roll the the uh trailer here so you can see but it's a bunch of youtubers a a couple of like low-level celebrities i guess that are going to be uh part of this but you can see a lot of people playing um a lot of people in person um playing the game and working with each other so yeah it's set up kind of like a, a game show competition but I don't know, man. I'm really. This is going to be on TBS, by the way. This is going to be on cable television. So it's like whoever can make the coolest stuff or get get no, the they're, character. No, they're going to have certain objectives. Like you need to make these two people fall in love or something. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. But they're going to have certain objectives that they need to make happen. And I guess it's going to be like a race to see who can do it or who can do it the best. And maybe there's judges. I I don't know. There's a lot to be determined here. Bobby, um, if you talk to fucking eighteen year old Emilio and you were like, Hey, there's gonna be a game about video games. Uh, there's gonna be a show about video games and they're gonna compete to see who could do the best. Eighteen year old Emilio would have been like, Oh my god, this sounds like the greatest thing. You present it to me right now and my heart just sank in my chest. Like I, I I'm just saddened. <laughs> Dude, it's, don't you remember there was like a Nickelodeon game show, I think it was Nickelodeon, and where they like and at the end they had to play like an arcade game. Remember that shit? That no. game was fucking awesome. That was a game show about video games, and it was Are my favorite. You talking about Johnny I, Arcade? Was was it called Johnny Arcade? Well, Johnny Arcade was the one that at the end they would um, they would go into the video game like they were doing like some cheesy '90s green screen. They would go and into they the would jump game. right they had and jump and duck. Yeah, yeah. I remember and, that. Okay, and if they they won they would get to run through this gauntlet of video games and just grab all the video games they could get, throw it in the back, or they'd stick it. They'd have these like bike helmets and pads that had Velcro and they'd stick the games to that. And whatever games they got at the end, um, they got to keep. Yeah, so yeah. That might be there, the one you're thinking of. There was, oh, well, back back in the day, there was Starcade, like old school one. Um, but then there was Nick okay. Arcade. I think that was the one I was talking about, Nick Arcade. Yeah, maybe because Johnny Arcade's pretty old, man. That's like 1990. Yeah, because in, in 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 Nick Arcade, I'm I'm looking at the screenshot, and they had like um, they had a door, and it would open up, and they would go inside the video game, and it was some really yeah, cheap like green okay. screen thing. Oh yeah, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yep. Like yeah, like that's... type of, yeah, that kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. Uh, that was fun. But like a Sims game, it's like, ah. Sims was fun. I, I always enjoyed it. I played a lot of it when I was a kid, you know, but, and like, I, I, I think I spoke about this too before, but there was like a remove the sensor thing patch or whatever, mm-hmm. like a crack or whatever. You put it in the file and it would remove them. And there was like nothing, like there were no penises. There were no nipples. <laughs> but like, just I was just curious because I was yeah. like, yeah, because I was like 10 or something whenever it came out. I don't mm-hmm. remember, but I wanted to see that stuff. I was probably 15, so I was a little bit more perverted. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure. Yeah. I don't know how this show's going to do, man. I don't know if that's something I would be interested in watching, to be honest. 
Did I love Emilio's webcam. It's like a bad episode of Hoarders. It's just, it's like instead of, you know, buying the fucking like, no, 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 like storage room wars. <laughs> but instead of like buying the stuff and trying to sell it, he just lives in that storage room. Like, that's what it looks like. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there, man. <laughs> so much shit in there. All right. Next article. This one's coming from Forbes. Three Ubisoft executives resign following widespread harassment allegations at the publisher. So I think I think this came up a little while ago where there were these allegations at Ubisoft. And after investigating, it was like, wow, this goes really deep. So three very high up people resigned. One of them, uh, Sergey Haskowit. I don't know if that's being pronounced correctly, but he apparently was a really important person. He was the CCO there, and he was like the guy who greenlit all the projects there. And um, him quitting was quite a shock. Uh, Jason Schreer, the... um, he, he now works for Bloomberg, the guy uh, he used to write articles for Kotaku, wrote Blood, Sweat, and Pixels. He commented on Twitter just saying how crazy this was because uh, he did not see this coming. And he's been interviewing lots of people that worked there, trying to get the full story, and is supposedly going to have a big tell-all article coming out soon that will shed some light on this. But um, yeah, man, I feel like this is a story we've been hearing a lot. Yeah. So is... Bobby, do you know if Jason Schreer is like doing his own thing now? He or is he not under a banner of somebody else? Now? No, he, he works for Bloomberg now, but I, he's still like oh, writing okay. another book and still doing other work. But yeah, he's officially with Bloomberg. Gotcha. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what he has to say about all this because it sounds like this is um, even though this these are people that you may not really know, like this is. This is a pretty big deal. They're kind of cleaning house over at Ubisoft. Good. Good for them. Yep. All right. I believe that's all we have for news here. So it must be time for listener questions. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I don't have a layout for <laughs> for three cameras for the listener question segment. So you won't be able to see them. I'll just have to read them. Um, first one comes from M. Pilaf. Emilio, did you get any cool gifts for your birthday? Uh, he's saying that because he sent me some cool gifts. And yeah, that's what I was thinking to too. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick. You don't even know that, dude. Like you knew it. You know, you knew it in your heart. Uh, yeah. He, he's like, "What's your favorite game?" And I was like, uh, a game series, and I was like, Well, I don't really have a really famous game. Today. He's like, Give me an IP, fool. And I was like, Oh, okay. So, uh, I told him which three is probably my favorite. I'm, I keep looking up because I'm a rabbit. Um, which three is probably my favorite game of all time. So, he bought me, um, I'm not sure what his name is, but he is the leader of the wild hunt, I'm pretty sure, or the side guy of the the anyway it's a very cool figure right um oh, that's or, did yeah, that nick is. paint that himself he did paint it himself wow um, he, he, <laughs> it's pretty cool um but he also got me a flask um of the with the witcher symbol on it and the two shot glasses that it comes with also have the witcher symbol on it so that is really cool and i was telling sam i was like Sam, like getting people flasks is super cool and everything, but like who carries a flask anymore? Like you're really hardcore alcoholic. And she's like, we always sneak alcohol into the movie theaters. I was like, son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you're right. That's exactly where I'm going to use this. You know, so, I always, I always used the flask. I always had one, you know, just in case. It's, and sometimes I would just an alcoholic, dude. That's I know, I know, I know. It's <laughs> my point. But but I lost it, and it had like my initials on it because it was like a gift from like my dad. It had like my initials on it, and I was like, "This is so corny," but like, fuck yeah. it, it's a big flask and it's nice and fancy, so fuck it. But I ended up losing it. I left it somewhere, someone's house or some shit, and it was, it's sad. It's very sad. But um, well, you, now that I have, sometimes the new, you need a flask. I got a leather wrapped fucking Witcher one. You can have my old shitty one that i had so <laughs> all right i'm down 
I'll be there. I think I'll, I might go to, I'm not 100 yet, but I think I'll be in San Diego for my birthday. So if, if you're COVID free, I'll cruise over. This house is <laughs> tripping with COVID, dude. <laughs> fucking have that hazmat soup team come in and fucking clean everything dude, with the fucking sprays and shit. <laughs> All right, next question from Neo Reloaded. If you could have sex with one female video game character, who would it be? For me personally, it would be one of the nurses from Silent Hill. I hope that's a joke. (laughs) What? Okay, when when, when, when when I was watching the movie and they're like, they're like, they're 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 pretty hot. They look good. Yeah. (laughs) Um. Miranda has always been super hot to, uh, from uh, from Mass Effect. Mm-hmm. She's always been like incredibly attractive. Although, like, if I was going to go with like any female, I would have to go with something that you can't get on Earth, right? So I'd probably go with the blue chick from Mass Effect because aren't aren't they like? Hey, Leanna. Ha- yeah, uh, not that she's hot. No, she's not, not hot. Leanna. What's her name? She's not hot. What I'm saying is, what kind of hole she got? You know what I mean? Like, what's what's different about that? <laughs> what kind of hole? <laughs> <she got? laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. You have three assholes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> oh my god! It's like blip. Um, yes, I would clown lotion. Yes, Jennifer is <laughs> a fucking smoke show. I agree. Jennifer is such a smoke. There's a Witcher. Uh, she's such a smoke show that I went. I picked her even though she was a bitch and a cunt over the super nice other girl that that's very attractive too. That's how good Jennifer looks. But uh, I would say Miranda's probably hotter than her if that's her wow. name. I dude, think that's her name. young young Lara Croft from all the new Tomb Raiders, dude. Like she's fucking smoking, dude. Like, she's 16 perfect. years old. In the first one, so just so you know what you're talking about. I mean, the about. third one, the third one. The third. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding, dude. I think she's 18. She better be. <laughs> I hope she's 18 because it's child abuse. That the beginning of that first game, I know, they beat right? The shit out of that girl, dude. <laughs> yeah. I think she's like early 20, doesn't she? I feel. I feel like she might be early 20. I'm not 100. Yeah, but... I think she's also based on a real world model. That. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I, yeah. I think. I think the actress maybe. It might, it might not that. Tomb Raider. <laughs> I don't want the triangle titties. <laughs> but maybe. I, there was an April Fool's I don't know if I ever spoke about this on the podcast, but there was an April Fool's joke for the first Tomb Raider, and it was like how to make Laura Croft be naked. And I and I was like, whenever, you know, the first Tomb Raider came out was in the 90s, right? 90s for the PlayStation 1. Yeah. Or, and um, and it was on EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly. And it was like how to get not, like Laura Croft naked. And it showed you, like, you have to go into your mansion, not into the real game, go into the mansion, and there's a statue. You're supposed to jump on the statue right, right next to the pool and dive, do a full dive and land. And the moment she comes out of the water, she'll be fully naked. And the, and the, and it, it showed, like, uh, like, the whole nude raider thing, right? And they showed, like, just bars over it. I sat there for I don't know how many hours trying to fucking get on that fucking statue. But it was impossible because, like, it had, like, the collision didn't let you do it. But, you know, uh, there was no internet. There was nothing. I thought it was real until, like, the next uh, next month comes out. Because it'll, it'll be like, I'm going to play Tomb Raider today. Before I do, I'm going to try to see if I can jump at that pool real quick. <laughs> but that didn't happen. And then the next month comes out, and we're like, we got so much hate mail from everyone here at EGM because of, you know, our fucked up. It was an April Fool's joke, guys. She's not naked. But then, you know, the PC Damn. virgin. The PC virgin. Got him. <laughs> Fucking Laura yeah. Cobb, bro. Man. And even if that had worked, I mean, the graphics were so low resolution back then. Like, Bro, anything really worked when you were like Anything 10, worked dude. back then, dude. <laughs> you forgot what it's like to be 13, Bobby? Did you forget? Seriously, dude. I played Leisure Suit Larry. Casey Penny's fucking lingerie catalogs, dude. <laughs> the first Leisure Suit Larry has, like, at the end of the game, you have sex with that hooker or whatever. Like, I was trying so hard, and I made it to the end. And I was like, oh, my God, super ultra pixelated titties. I was super excited. I yeah. had like a little. <laughs> um, did you answer, Bobby? He specifically um, said you can't get, you can't weasel your way out of this one. He said. Yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know. Maybe the uh. W- what was the one from Mass Effect? She was an alien that never showed her face. Oh, that was like the Zoria. dude. Why? Bobby. But that was why, the dude, though? Bobby? 
<laughs> well, what was her? Yeah, okay. Wait, but what's her name? Come on, I'm playing the video. I don't know. Tally. 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 But yeah. why? I don't know, man. She just had like a cloudy face. But she had a great body, though. <laughs> All right. Go with that. I don't know. That's a dude okay. with I'm trying to be armor. creative here. Okay. Well, yeah. there's no wrong answers because it's opinion based, but you you failed. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cloudy face. I go with cloudy face. She has a great body, guys. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question from Spubaka. In regards to the quest not playing. Okay, this is about what we were talking about last week. We got a lot of things wrong with VR. Um, so in regards to the quest, Oculus Quest, not playing most Steam VR games, I don't think that's true. I just bought one and also bought the Oculus Link to connect it to my PC. I can play every Steam VR game, but I haven't tried Half-Life Alex. So I also want to uh, read another one here because someone else commented on on this. Hollow Point. Mm -hmm. So Hollow Point says, love the show, never miss a week. I have a correction regarding the Oculus Quest. With the USB connection, it plays all the games from the Oculus Store and Steam. I have yeah. had mine for eight months and have played Alex, Asgard's Wrath, and a ton of others. The recent yeah. updates they have implemented have made it simple, but you need an average to high-end PC, and the graphic quality is less than the other higher-end units. You can't beat the price, and the wireless games are actually really fun. I highly recommend a Quest if you don't want to spend a lot of money and want to try VR. So uh, basically what they're saying is you have to be hardwired in so that your PC is running, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Valve or whatever that thing's called. Yeah. Steam VR. Yeah. So they, Steam VR. they yeah. sell the cable. I, I don't know. Maybe you can get it bundled. But there's an $80 cable you can buy for the Quest that will connect it to your computer. Um, one of the advantages to the Oculus is it doesn't have light boxes, though. You don't have to set those up, which is pretty nice. And they yeah, and the hand tracking too on it and then from what i know you can use any cable now you don't need the actual oculus cable or you don't need the official one that yeah, they buy there i mean i did a quick search and everything i saw came up like 80 bucks i don't know i, I might feel better with the official one anyway but i think those uh, ones require a display port connection as well for the oculus I think uh, I, like what I read was you can use any cable now. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't need to use the official one, but there's something about the official one that works a little bit better. So, and again, like one of the major sound points for VR for me is the party trick aspect of it, and the you lose a lot of the party trick part of it when you invite everybody into your garage or next to your computer. So if you could like take the VR to the party, that has a lot more credit yeah. not, not i'm not saying it's better i'm just saying mm -hmm. that part of it gets a lot of points from me that's like that's, like that's my sensor for my valve for my index there's one and there's one over there and like this whole li like the whole living space is kind of big so i just pull the couch and i have a huge fucking gaming area to play yeah, yeah i think you can do like gigantic if you had this space right mm -hmm. uh does alana play it do, does the girl play it uh, Gia, yeah. loves it. Gia loves it, but um, I did notice like after a couple minutes, she started getting like a headache. So I don't, uh, I, I don't want to recommend it. To maybe you didn't calibrate it for her tiny head. I, I did. I, we, because, well, here's the thing I calibrate and I told her, does this look better? Does she be like, yeah, yeah. And you know, everything looked great. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, stop touching it. And I just want to fucking do shit. You right. know, and, and she was having, she, uh, she played Minecraft in VR. And she Dude, was like, how lucky are you that you got a total fucking, video game nerd as it's a stepdaughter awesome. it's awesome yeah I, I just um it's just sometimes it's just like it's too much because there's times where I, like i, I don't want to play because i want to do some of this stuff so i feel bad saying oh i know i know, know. mila's <laughs> literally right here all the time like yeah. now now can we play avengers <laughs> lego now yeah. what are you what are you doing <laughs> yeah dude same thing the exact same thing like i'll be working doing something editing something or whatever or just browsing the internet i don't want a game right now and she's like now yeah, can we play fortnite like can we, or like can we play on the minecraft server or blah blah blah, blah. and i was just like give me a second is it a one or two bedroom uh two better oh, okay yeah no, she, no she's, she's got her own room dude she's got like some dope ass like studio type bedroom like 
bunk bed where like she sleeps on top but like the bottom's like a desk and she has yeah. like i mounted her tv she she she's she owns my xbox now apparently um she got her switch <laughs> in there <laughs> yeah dude like i was like oh you know like i wanted to play resident evil and uh because I, I still play resident evil too and i really really because that's my favorite resident evil of all time and i really want to play it but like the xbox is in there and i'm like i kind of have to take this from her and like and she's like, it's okay. You can totally borrow my Xbox. And it's like, really? It's my fucking and I was like, <laughs> 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 but, uh, right, what was next? Bobby? What do we right. got? Next question from JP Diddy. What is your guys game of the year so far? And what is on your radar this year for game of the year? So, I mean, it, obviously cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. That's on everybody's radar answers. for possible game of yeah. the year contender. Uh, you know, I've been talking about this for a while, but I finally did it. I went through and checked all the games that I played this this year. So, well, that I've talked about on the podcast. Now, if it was something that I just briefly mentioned, I didn't put it on there. But so I, I talked about 45 games that I played this year. Seven of those games were retro, released before 2007, 2008. So I have been playing a lot of newer games. Um, I also talked about two books, one documentary and one event. But I was able to, I looked at all these games that I played and the game of the year so far out of the ones that I played was actually Black Mesa, which officially came out in March. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed that game. I mean, it sounds weird to say, hey, that's game of the year because it's it's been in development since like, what, 2015? And, um, you know, it's been a work in progress, but I, out of all the games that I have played, that's definitely my favorite this year. Such now, game. now we're talking about games that came out in 2020, right, Bobby? Is that the well, that, pre-work is well, it? Yeah. Well, technically that game came out in 2020. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm cool with that. I'm just saying that like, I haven't played a lot from 2020. Uh, I played a lot of 2019, a lot of 2018, uh, just not a lot of 2020 uh right now i would have to say it's gears tactics but that's just because i haven't played a lot of 2020s and it's a really good game yeah. um, I, I would have thought remnant uh, did, you, did you finally get into remnant dude i got so deep into remnant like how many like shit out. like like multiple times you beat it no i beat it once but then we started playing the uh the roguelike version of it mm -hmm. do you know there's a roguelike in there no fucking clue. I'm just There's saying yes, like I know shit, but I don't know shit. <laughs> Dude, do you know the game? Have you played it? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I beat the game. I oh, talked okay. about it on the podcast. You know, I remember. Um, so there's a mode where you and multiplayer, you can, you can, you all start naked with a thousand dollars. There's three vendors. You buy the best shit you can, and you go into uh, a roguelike. It's a roguelike. You do the best you can. It gets harder every six minutes. You do. You keep going and going and going. And then if you beat the boss, you go back to the vendor and spend the money that you gained. They put a, a hardcore roguelike right into an already great game. Uh, but yeah, but it didn't come out this year. Bobby is another thing. Mm -hmm. Remnant came out. Yeah, came out last year. Yeah, last year. yeah or maybe even 2018. I want to say. I no, I think that was 2019. Yeah, I mean, yeah. technically, Deep Rock Galactic came out this year too, but you know, I don't think it's fair to throw that out there. We already get, yeah, we already give it game of the year. Yeah, technically, Fortnite comes out. This, I mean, came out this year too. It's finally out of early access. Fortnite, oh, wow. so it, they can go they fuck can. themselves. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh shit! I actually started. It's a weird year, JP. You know, because like you know, a lot of places stop development and. It's just a weird year, I think, overall. Uh, but by the end of the year, we should... Like, this month, fucking four or five games that I'm really interested in are coming out in the second half of this month, which half of that, I'm going to be off of work. So I can't wait to dig into these games. I actually got into the... Uh, I got the Mortal, Mortal Shell beta, and I did not play it. And I think it ends tomorrow. The beta ends tomorrow. But that game comes out in September. I don't know if you guys... Mm -hmm. about oh yeah, that we talked about that last week. JP Diddy has yeah. actually been playing quite a bit of that. Okay. okay. Really How is it? it? 
Uh, it actually, he was saying it's really good. He's played a lot of those Dark Souls games, so I would trust his opinion on it. Okay, I actually loaded it up right now because I was like, "What's this?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, it's a beta I the other day." But uh, I want to give that shit a shot. All right, we got three more questions here. Um, actually, these ones are kind of comments. Um, so last week. Uh, Emilio, you were talking about how many times a day you go to the bathroom. So Warconius asks, Emilio, what do you eat? You seem to poop an excessive amount. Is it a full poop each, t- each time or little ones? I poop once a day and it seems like enough for me. Do you multitask while pooping, order on Amazon, pay bills, watch a movie? I do that. Shit. I feel like, uh. because like I've, I've been there when Emilio's pooping, not in the bathroom with him, but you know. <laughs> He's, but he's he's, he's kind of quick. I don't know. He's like, I'm gonna take a shit, and then five minutes later, he's like, I'm out. Done. It's because he doesn't up. wash his hands, man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When I poop, um, I but five times, I remember my science teacher in seventh grade talking about this. I don't know why, but I remember him saying that like everybody's different. It's like totally normal for some people to go once a day, and totally normal for some people to go five times a day. It just totally depends on your body. So I don't know. I never really paid too much attention to how much I went. <laughs> I've had a loosely, loosely based theory. I feel like a, a lot of the a lot of the white guys that I've talked to are always like three thirty p.m. That's when I drop my eight logs, eight and a half logs or whatever, and they're just like on a schedule. And then uh, all the Mexicans I know, we just shit all the time, dude. Just like nonstop. Um, well, I'm on a is schedule. that how you are? I'm on a schedule. Like I, when I'm, um, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm working, I have, I have to make sure I get paid for my shits. You know what I mean? That's, so I only poop at work to make sure I got paid for that. I just, that's the only way. This is why you're unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did cost analysis on you. They're like, they make, he makes us this much money, but he also costs us this much money for pooping. They're like, Oh, we're going to have to let that guy go. It's just ruining our plumbing over here. uh but no uh i don't know what i eat man i eat whatever's around i uh if it's laying around if it's already i just eat it salami cheese like things that you don't have to prepare just stuff in your mouth that's what i eat Mm -hmm. mostly and yes i'm always on my phone i'm on my phone (laughs) the whole time a doctor once told me that was bad so i don't know i've tried i've tried not to do that like being on your phone while you're on the can I don't that's know. All I, I, that's I all anyone ever does, right? Like, what else know. are all you my, supposed to do? All my news is when I'm taking a shit. That's like did, I walk out of the toilet like super fucking. Babe, did you know? <laughs> Every <laughs> not, there's not just that too. But if I don't have something to read, I can't relax. So like, if I'm like in a strange environment, I'll grab a, like a shampoo bottle and I will start reading ingredients. Classic, classic. Yeah. <laughs> a shampoo. <laughs> For some reason, when you said a strange environment, I thought like a public restroom, but I don't know. Maybe you were thinking someone else's house. Yeah, somebody else's house. Okay. All right. Um, Another comment regarding last week. So uh, we we were asking or we were wondering about the uh, the immunity. Like now that you've had the coronavirus, are you immune to it? So this is from Bevo. He said, I just started this week's podcast. I'm an actual doctor. If anyone has any general questions, I've been hearing from the experts that the most likely case is between several months to one to two years of slowly decreasing immunity after infection. A lot of this is guesswork based on decreasing immunity levels in previously infected people over the last few months, combined with what we know about reinfection from other coronaviruses. We don't actually know the true answer because no one has been infected long enough to know for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I read an article that Spain, the government of Spain, uh, did a study on their population, and only five percent of the of people who had contracted COVID made antibodies for the next next go around. So I don't know how good their science is, but um, hopefully the country of Spain does okay. But still. If only 5% of us are immune from now on, like, fuck, dude. This yeah. is my new way of life, man. Because I got sick back in January or, like, I forgot when, like, December or January. Like, really sick, like, fever. Like, I felt like shit. I was in bed, like, 
three, four days. And it was one of the most fucked up flus ever. For me, it was just like, this is really fucked up flu. I got it from Milana. She got it from work. So like, there's a part of me that just makes like, hopefully I'm like, hopefully that was it. Maybe I did get it. And that was my, and that's it. So on f- next Friday, I got my antibody test. Uh, the Red Cross is doing the thing right now. If you go to the Red Cross, donate blood, they'll do an antibody test for you for free. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. So they test you for an- antibodies for COVID? For, for COVID, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not a, they aren't testing to see if you actually have it. They're testing to see if you have the antibodies for it. Yeah, only the antibodies, yeah. I, okay. I did a COVID test, but the, the swab in the mouth here in LA, you just sign up next so you can go do it. You just drive up to give you a fucking cotton swab, check your shit. Uh, they, they'll tell you in 48 hours if you have it or not. And that's when I came to San Diego. I found I didn't have it. So I can, I made sure that I didn't go anywhere before I came to San Diego. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, like I did that. And now I'm thinking like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do the antibody test. See if I, if I, you know, if there's any, and like anything there and I can just be like, you know, more stress free from this shit. Yeah. I, I wasn't able to get a test, man. Uh, not through, my hospital at least um there's a bunch Mm. of clinics all around here and they're they're very confusing they're like oh it's gonna be 100 bucks for this 20 bucks for that 40 bucks for this like it's it's kind of weird how they do do the pricing on it yeah but um what's weird is my girlfriend was able to get a test i think it's because she told him like oh i work with kids or something like that so they they tested her and then they she got the results like in two days which was super quick. Like even the clinics that I was looking at, they were saying like, "Oh yeah, we're backed up. It's going to be like ten days." I don't yeah, know. I'm sure yeah, they got ours in forty minutes, dude. That's crazy. They must have just done it yeah. right there on the spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they did it right there on the spot. Um, it's got. If you want to do it still, Bobby, I think you're fine now. But mm-hmm. if you want to do it still, it's right next to your house. It's called COVID Clinic. Um, you just drive up and they just do it. You they do did, it like they, while you're in the car. <laughs> Did they do yeah, they nostril? do it in the car. Because you just go. have to they swab your to you. nose. And... Yeah, they just swab your nose, and you drive off, and they email you 30 to 40 minutes later. Mm-hmm. It's not just like swab your nose. They put your, they're supposed to put it all the way fucking. Well, I when keep they hearing that. Doing, yeah, they, when they first did the test, like they used to put it six inches up your nose. But now um, a lot of the tests, <laughs> you don't have to do it that far. Yeah, dude, that, that's There is no six, six inches up your nose is death, dude. There's dude, no that's way over brain. six inches. Yeah. Yeah, that's your Take brain. A, Pickles your brain. <laughs> no COVID for you. Yeah. No, I just, I just, I just did this uh, swab. Uh, they tell you ten seconds each slip, uh, fucking back of your throat and your tongue, and then you, you you dump it in a canister that has a little bit of liquid, shake it up, and then there's like trash cans outside. You just throw them in those trash cans, and that's it. Mm-hmm. They're collected that day. Forty eight hours later, you get results. That's because you know we have four million people in LA, and we're. I think we're one of the cities in California that are most infected. So, yeah. hmm. I'm curious, guys, uh, as listeners on your end, audio quality wise and all that, how are these um, remote podcasts sounding? Obviously, they're not sounding as good. How terrible is it? How good is it? Um, like and subscribe and leave your comments below. <laughs> I was like, I was having difficulties with my mic earlier. That's why I wasn't. Uh, when you were like, I do, I do want to be a part of it. So I was on Discord jumping that back and forth. And then every five minutes, people were like, your mic's going to shit, dude. So when, that's why I was like, ah, fuck it. I might, I'm not going to do it. And then I, after I restarted everything, I guess it works now. Hmm. So I was kind of scared. Sure. All right. Uh, the last question, this is more of a comment, I found in our Steam group. So don't post in our Steam group because nobody will ever find it. I happened to I, I happened to come across it because I was trying to find our curator page, and they make that really hard to find. By the way, dude, um, it's always pancakes. It's this one guy, and he will not make the jump to uh, Discord. <laughs> Got to get on Discord, man. That's where we're all at. But I'm glad I found this comment. I'm a few weeks late on it. He posted this um, back in June. Uh, You're but- 33 years yelly on the comments on this movie, Bobby, so it's okay. <laughs> he says, Bobby, I agree with your take on The Exorcist. So this, I think this was two, three weeks, three episodes ago when I was three talking about the, Exor- yeah. the Exorcist. 
Um, by the way, I think Friedkin is a very underrated and overlooked director. Just watched his 1977 film Sorcerer last night for the first time. Not the best film, but you can see is, he is a masterful director and did some amazing work throughout. If you have not seen it, you might want to add it to your list. Anyway, love the podcast. Keep it up and great work, you too. Um, so thank you, man. I'm glad you liked my uh, take on The Exorcist. And if you have never seen an interview with William Friedkin, look at one on YouTube. The guy's a fucking maniac. He's like your typical 70s director, man. He's just, he's he's a monster. And um, there's a really good interview where he talks about The the Exorcist 2. That one actually took place in 2013. But look at like his ones from the 70s, dude. He's wearing those like two-toned like glasses, like that like feathered mullet. And he's just like, you'd think he's, he'd be on a whole bunch of cocaine. Maybe he is, but he, he certainly acts like it. And he's definitely your typical director that's just like, it, you hear about the horror stories about like they went through on The Exorcist, like breaking Linda Blair's back on that scene where she's flipping up and down because, you know, in the, the 70s, it had to be real. It had to be visceral. They actually hit each other, you know. But I actually, I did watch Sorcerer on your recommendation, man, and it was a great movie. I mean, it's got Roy Scheider, the dude from Jaws in it. And um, God, dude, that the scene on the bridge with the truck was just so intense. I can see why that's not his most popular film, though, because Sorcerer, it's like, has you have no idea why the movie's called Sorcerer. I looked it up, and it's because one of the trucks is named Sorcerer. Um, but the, the name makes you think, like, oh, maybe it has to do with, like, sorcerers or mysticism or something like magic but no it has absolutely nothing to do with that the beginning is also really all over the place like those first vignettes like it's very scattered there's no like fade so you don't really know that like you're jumping from one location to the other other than the lower third telling you but it's just it all seems kind of jumbled together but once the action goes like that movie was really good and yeah dude he's an insane director everybody knows the exorcist everyone's probably seen french connection if you're into if you're like really into movies um, and then Sorcerer, I had honestly never even heard of another movie by him that is pretty out there, but you know, maybe give it a shot is called cruising from 1980. And that is um, Al Pacino plays a cop who has to go undercover in New York's gay S and M scene to solve a crime. And it, uh, as it, one does, as one does. And it's pretty explicit and it uh, and it's William Friedkin, man, the, the maniac. So like you, you know what you're getting into. Uh, I'll probably watch that one again soon. But yeah, yeah, man. Thanks for your comments. That's awesome. Always love Ray, talking did movies. You, Ray, there's no way you could do a pop culture podcast and not cover Watchmen on HBO. Did you watch that? Um, I'm, that's actually the next one that's on my list to watch, dude. Uh, it it might great. be the best single because there's no second season on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. they, they, the director's like, we nailed it. Why would we do a second season? It is the best single season of anything I've ever seen. Yeah, like, like I've, I've I've heard how great it is, and that's that's um. I just finished Crashing. I don't know if you ever watched Crashing on HBO, the Judd Apatow show. Well, it's, it's written by Peter Holmes, by P. Holmes, but. Uh, Jet episode produces it and writes some of the episodes. And I just finished that yesterday. And my next one was um, I'm doing um, Watchmen and I'm all doing the show called Barry. I don't know if you ever watched Barry. Uh, uh, no. Oh, yeah, with Bill Hader. Oh. I've heard that's with really Bill good. Oh, I've heard yeah. it's really good. Sam yeah. watched the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to watch that too. So those are my next shows, which will start either tonight or, you know, or tomorrow or whatever fucking day, you know. I can do whatever. Good luck on Watchmen, dude. If you were anything like me, you're not going to be able to stop i'll That's probably end up watching it like i'm i'm excited for the boys to start soon like in some well, like, i don't know like, how good was that trailer dude dude, dude i can't wait well, i'm excited they didn't give they didn't give anything away and they got mm -hmm. everybody excited yeah it's the best trailer yeah. Yeah. yeah i can't wait for that it's so good i, st I started re-watching it and i was like why am i wasting my time re-watching it let me go you know watch something else and so that's why i'm gonna start watching watch Bobby, have you seen the boys no i have not Dude, it's probably the best thing Amazon's ever put out. Mm -hmm. Really good, mm -hmm. really fucked up. Yeah, I've, I've heard really good things about it. I just got a tough time with TV, you know. Like I actually, I did. don't know why, dude. Why do movies get more clout just because it's a different format? <laughs> because they're like way better, <laughs> and they do it all in like an hour. Is that and true half. though? I don't know if that's one hundred percent true, man. Movies have that natural birth, life, death cycle, dude. Like an hour and a half, two hours, boom, you're done with it. it 
TV shows are all about keeping people employed for the most part. It's only until Depends recently on in like Game of Thrones. Depends like, on the show, dude. I think that thing's oh. that's all changed, dude. You're talking about network television from yeah, 15 to 5, now, 10, right? 15 years ago. Yeah, but still. Now we're talking about. I, I know, yeah. I mean, that has gotten better ever since Game of Thrones because mm -hmm. everyone was blown away. It's like, oh my God, he killed off the main character or this guy who was a pretty big part and that blew everyone's mind and so everyone started doing the same thing. But I mean, the problem that TV shows have though is that you've, you're in for what an hour an hour an episode 40 42 minute runtime usually and you got like 10 episodes a season it's a lot of time dude it's a lot of time it's a lot of time and you forget it man. like you forget most of it and most of it's not really even worth remembering i mean you remember kind of the important stuff but it's just i don't know man it just i, don't I like agree serial, serialized shows and i've tried i recently when i had some free time i watched it wasn't very good i was disappointed but ash vs evil dead I watched the first season of that and that was I thought was, it was fun. It was fun, but it was totally like we're off to do this thing and these are our adventures along the way and like it was kind of cool but it didn't uh, in a way it almost felt like old television where everything's back to the status quo at the end, but I don't know, I guess it was kind of like one long story, but I, I don't know, I just didn't I, I'm not watching the second season. Did not hook me. You're you're also talking about something developed by fx and wasn't even like their premiere show or anything mm -hmm. like that like well FX if you watch something like anarchy FX i'm not saying they don't do amazing. good writing or anything like that i all i'm saying is like you're not talking about the premiere stuff like the boys i would say is premiere stuff game of thrones is premiere stuff um there's there there are some shows that are transcending shows but yeah i see what you're saying bobby is like you got to fill up so much time that granted two or three episodes usually are throwaway episodes nobody's going to remember them somebody else wrote them somebody else directed them they're just garbage episodes and that sucks it happens from time yeah. to time mm -hmm. but um well i mean it's not TV. even just like you can just cut off a couple episodes usually like within the episodes there's a lot of stuff that you don't need what i find like a lot of these like really good shows out now is just like a bunch of plot they're very plot driven it's like this happens and then that happens and you're trying to keep track of everything that happens and then at the end they just like show a cliffhanger and so you're hooked and you got to watch the next one same thing that's that's bunch what of, a lot of tv shows does bunch, it's bunch just... of fucking plot and then like cliffhanger so you got to watch mm -hmm. the next one dude it's like a goosebumps book they always put that rl stein always put the little cliffhanger at the end so you'd read the next chapter so i don't mm -hmm. know i find it a little manipulative and i just it i is. honestly I, like i feel like you can get a better experience just sitting two hours at a movie like i totally see that point of but then again like there's nothing fucking wrong with that. <laughs> I love getting the cliffhanger at the end if, of each If you episode, have the dude. time and you enjoy it, like absolutely go for it. Like I've totally been into shows in the past and like if that's your thing, but I just, I can't do it. Right now what I'm trying to do is watch the Clone Wars and it's so hard, man. The Clone Wars animated one because there's a lot of like uh, important stuff that happens, you know, with Darth Maul coming back, mm -hmm. but there's so much filler in that, but that's like your episodic I yeah, really, I really enjoy though in that in the Clone Wars how they do that like movie tone newsreel at the beginning like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in the rebellion like, like mm -hmm. I, I like that little bit but it's it's so I'm much. watching the Legend of Korra with uh with Mila and it's the same thing uh and this time in uh something city and it even has that new re news reel like shit playing and it's good mm -hmm. it catches you up especially yeah. since you know you can't watch the shit back to back but anyway bobby i think tv shows deliver a little more respect especially now yes. i think this is the greatest time in tv uh mm -hmm. ever dude i'm ever. sorry but ho like hollywood's pretty fucking dead right now man honestly it's just and and the only thing surviving right now are tv shows and yeah it's just watch, just, the like, boys, watch, watch the boys bobby come on man Watch the show. Watch the boys. How watch many hours of that do I have to watch? I, I, I think it's like eight episodes. So it's eight hours. Eight, Is it eight? Yeah. I think it's eight, eight episodes. That's probably about right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. some things, okay, like th this is not. This is not standard, but The Watchmen was only intended for one season. There's no wasted space. There's no filter. The entire time you're like. Yeah, there there is that whole like I gotta watch the next episode, but I didn't know where the story was going. There are no good guys. There are no bad guys. You don't know what the fuck's going on. It's incredible, dude. And it's not based on that movie. It's almost like the Watchmen comic book happened, and then the movie was based on the comic book. But this is like 
80 years after the comic book or 50 years after the comic book. So it's not a sequel. It's just kind of like in the same universe. And that's about it. Mm. They sometimes mention the other characters, but that's about it from what I could gather. Anyway, I thought it was fucking phenomenal. Mm. And uh, based on that, speaking for Bobby, Ray, and myself, Netflix, and uh, oh, you know what? We'll say TV is better than movies, titties, everyone. Bye. <laughs> See, he names he names the podcast, but I get to sign off however I want. <laughs> we forgot to say what we we're playing next week, though. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, son of a bitch. Yeah, he told me about that. But uh, what's it called? Um, next week, I don't know if you guys are.